Hello everyone. My name is Vince Castle and I am your storyteller for this new adventure called the Boros Saga. This is campaign one, Bane's Break of the three campaign arc for this wild tale. Our story takes place in my homebrew world of Boros in the year 1277 PT and is completed by a wonderful cast of heroes. Let's meet them. Hello, I am Sage Ryan, and today I am playing Curse, your Circle of Wildfire Druid, who is a petal pink tiefling. Hello, I'm Kaylee Bray, and I am playing Neela Beerbiter, your human barbarian, who happens to be a pirate. <laughs> Hi, I'm Omar Najam. I'm playing Jibe Tafro, who is a tabaxi rogue, who also has spent some time on ships. Hi, I'm Abria Iyengar, playing Prithiv, your Cult of the Amiel cleric. Hi, I'm Aaron Gray. I'm playing Luca Stone Talon, your air cocker monk. Hi, I'm Ash Ignis, and I'm playing Astrid, the half elf warlock. Now, before we uh, dive into the thick of the action, there is a little something that I would like to show you to give you just a bit of insight into the journey that we're about to undertake. It's about an old legend, a great mystery, and ancient ills seeping back into our world once more. Check it out. There is a story told, be it in hushed reverence amongst adventurers seeking inspiration from the greats of old, or as a bedtime tale to lull children to sleep, to instill in them the morals of decency, bravery, and sacrifice. It is a story told of heroes who, in the year 841 PT, gave everything to free the world from one of the greatest tyrannies it has ever known, a figure terrifying and enigmatic even to this day, known as the Bane of Southmarch, Oris Kadir Southmarch. This tale, spread for years merely as rumor and oral tradition, was finally published in 849 in what would become a career-making masterwork for journalist and scholar Ava Mendax, titled The Legend of Bainsbreak. Her book tells of the rise of Oris from mere duke to becoming the monarch of Southmarch after the death of its king, Euron Southmarch, and the relegating into seclusion of its rightful heir, Princess Iana Southmarch. It tells of how Tereve and the world became wrought with famine, disease, and conflict under Oris's watchful eye. Ava's book tells us of how Oris expanded his grip around all of Boros thanks to the service of a secret police, the Callers. Their infiltrations into world government, into society, and the disappearing of dissidents saw the continents of Boros brought to their knees. They were led by four mysterious commanders known only as the Lieutenants, reporting directly to Oris himself. The adventurers, who history would come to know as the Banebreakers, were first spotted in Imperia in the year 840, in the city of Delta's Meat. It is unclear from where they had come or how they first joined together, but they immediately set off south towards Southmarch, perhaps to confront Oris directly. This plan was fated for disaster, however, as the heroes were bested and caught, suffering unspeakable horrors in a South March prison for over six months, but befriending another inmate who would assist in their eventual escape, a tiefling named Reds. From there, they fled further south, scarred both physically and emotionally from the ordeal, and acquiring a mysterious new traveling companion along the way. The group moved through the continent of Isleway, carrying with them some sort of artifact, and then crossed the seas to the Republic. For the next leg of the story, Ava followed in the Banebreaker's footsteps and journeyed back to her home of Traver's Peak, the capital of the Republic herself. There, she met a man named Carlisle Jacobi, Cal for short, a former caller captain who had been tasked to hunt the Banebreakers down years ago. He told her of something the Banebreakers had been looking for, a golden figurine, the head of which Cal now possessed. Ava couldn't make heads nor tails of why they would want it, but examining it gave her a migraine. 
He then told her of the horrible fight between the Callers and Banebreakers that took place here in Travers Peak, where the heroes suffered a terrible defeat. Further, he revealed the identity of who had been traveling with the adventurers, Princess Iana Southmarch herself. During this fateful battle, Iana was captured by the Callers, and Cal was grievously injured by the Banebreakers. According to Cal, Iana died in Oris's custody within the month by Oris's own hand, a tragedy Cal has never forgiven himself for enabling. She was the last of the Southmarsh line. Ava continued her journey of research further north, meeting an elf named Juvenis Vlacus, the protege of the recently late legendary mapmaker Viteran Timor. As it turned out, the Banebreakers had been through here on their adventures years ago and had discovered something uncertain from Viteran during their meeting. Afterwards, the Banebreakers moved on and, as Ava learned, were evidently involved in an incident with the Aarakocra in Suncrest, wherein an entire town was burned to the ground and many people slaughtered. It would warrant further investigation. Ava ultimately pursued the Banebreaker's story yet further north, and it was in Polyria, as she was writing her book in the year 849, that Ava met an unusual elven man, clad in the ragged and threadbare vestments of a wanderer. He told Ava that he knew of the Banebreakers and about the true events that took place at their final destination the town of High Point, which he would divulge if she joined him on the trip there. Further, he offered her a mysterious blue potion that cured the migraines she'd started to get during her journeys. They set off. Returning to the ruins of the once thriving city of High Point, she was led by the unnamed elf further north who explained that the heroes fought Oris directly in pitched combat, during which Oris may have himself employed magic, a previously unknown detail. He further revealed to Ava's shock that it might well have been the heroes themselves in an act of powerful magic to finally defeat the Bane, who destroyed the city and coastline, killing Oris, the Banebreakers themselves, and, as unfortunate collateral damage, the people of High Point. The elven man performed a ritual comprised of magics Ava had never before seen to uncover what he called the recorded truth of the events that transpired here years ago. Languages and images beyond counting flashed before his eyes when the projection was suddenly torn away by a dark, iridescent purple energy. Seemingly satisfied with what he gleaned, the duo departed, but not before they were confronted by three figures dressed very much like the collars of Oris's day, just different, off, exuding a power and menace that could not be quantified. The elf asked Ava to return back to the carriage, his piercing electric blue eyes compelling her, and sent her speeding on her way, opting to confront the callers himself. Ava never saw him again. The book was a swift success, and is even more popular now, in the year 1277, as it was then. The story of the Banebreaker's triumph captured the hearts of generations. Though the world is now unfortunately seeing many of the ales of the 840s once again resurfacing, and with the line of South March monarchs long since ended by Oris, there are those who believe that province has simply become a puppet state for the Republic, a shell of its former glory. Nevertheless, a celebration, known unsurprisingly as the Banesbreak Festival, is held every year in the ruins of High Point. This is where we find ourselves today, at the beginning of an incredible adventure in which six unsuspecting festival attendees will change the world forever. Welcome to the Boros Saga Banesbreak. Welcome, all of you! out there and in here to episode one of our story titled A Difference. Oh my god, I am so excited to have you all here. Finally, y'all, this show has been years in the making. Yeah, the story has been years. developing for so long, many here can attest, and um, 
Are you all ready just to dive into it? Let's do it. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Start. Okay. Tell the story. We open among the ruins of a city once known in centuries past as High Point in autumn of the year 1277 post Traverse. The air has a bracing chill, uh, but it's otherwise calm. The skies are clear and the trees are midway through their beautiful change of color, casting warm tones through the forests and hills to the south of the former city. Now, not all here is ruined and desolate, however, as we, in fact, do find ourselves in the very heat of the annual Bane's Break Festival. International cuisines, carnival games, gambling, musical performances, evangelists of the divine, demonic, and devilish, representatives from nearly every world government and major institution, stage plays, a full-fledged circus, every excitement your heart could desire has coalesced from the distant corners of the world to celebrate the downfall of Boris Kadir Southmarch over 400 years ago. The lurid banners, tents, kiosks, and stands have been set up largely using the foundations of the once city as support, like a skeleton clinging to garish robes. Each of you find yourselves in attendance at this very festival. We're going to meet you one by one. <clears throat> Curse. <laughs> I have to do my part. Yep. Curse, you've managed to slip away and have ostensibly lost any potential pursuers. Would you please describe yourself to us and tell us what we might find you up to right now? Uh, yes, Curse, a very uh, pale pink tiefling um, with raspberry horns and a shaved side of a kind of strawberry hair is uh, ducking and running through the crowd. Uh, she's not doing an excellent job of hiding, but every time she passes by somebody, she like kind of stands behind them to try and take on their shape and duck under tables. Uh, and in the background, you can see that there is a, a fire blowing up at a, um, a striped tent that would appear to be the circus of this event. Um, and she is continually looking back to keep an eye on the fire and uh, ducking and hiding behind various tables. Indeed. And, I mean, you're not the only one having taken notice of this fire, of course. There are people who seem to be, some are kind of entertaining the idea maybe this was on purpose, this is part of the next act, or one ongoing. Uh, perhaps just a bit of a pyrotechnics to give it a bit of a flash. As the fire spreads through the tent, however, people seem to display a bit more concern, and you see some officials of the festival running over with buckets uh, to try and begin dowsing that. Um, however, as you are ducking in and around the crowds, uh, you see a familiar face, catch just a sight of someone in there. Uh, the animal wrangler at the circus, uh, a fellow named Levin, nearly a head above the rest of the crowd, very tall fellow, looking for something. Now, you couldn't be sure what he was looking for, but it doesn't feel great. What do you do? I wild shape into a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> This is how we start. <laughs> uh, immediately, just uh, <laughs> not by the way, assuming that you wild shape and you maintain your exact position in the air. Uh, I like that. But it's, yeah, it's certainly possible. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> as in your hamster form, mm -hmm. where do you try and scurry off to? Um, I want to move whatever the opposite direction that he is looking at the moment. Um, if there's anything that seems to be large or distracting in a direction the opposite way, somewhere I would get buried easily lost in. Okay, but are you a pink hamster? Ooh. I like to think that she has like a, a little bit of a strawberry blonde color. Oh my God. Okay, yes. yeah, wonderful. Uh, great, yeah, there is absolutely um, a series of dining tents nearby where people have gathered to eat the meals they've picked up from the various carts and kiosks throughout the um, throughout the festival, where there are quite a lot of people currently seated. If you want to try and scurry in there and, and mix in with that yep. group, yes, just me, just me, the hamster, and all of those people. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, you're quite small. I mean, you're there's a lot I'm of wildlife under tables. running around. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, wonderful. When you do uh, enter the tent, uh, even just looking behind you over the crowds, you mm -hmm. notice Levin who had not really caught sight of anything to begin with, seems to turn his head and just wander off deeper into the festival. Uh, what do you do once you're inside? Um, I will find somewhere safe to drop wild shape, because um, I think I will still be more efficient with my legs. Great. It is exhausting to have those tiny little hands. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. 
So there Chris is. just wild shapes back in the <laughs> And you find yourself just behind the food tents, kind of more like where the staff would work, behind the various um, alleyways and walkways of this festival. However, as you come out of wild shape, you notice just a little bit yonder, there's um, a fellow uh, dressed much like a, a festival barker who seems to notice you, um, not wild shape out necessarily, but notice you in distress and, and panting and trying to like check around you. Um, and he sort of gently walks up. Uh, uh, miss, um, I'm sorry. Uh, if you don't mind me saying, it seems like you're uh, trying to stay a bit on the down low right now. Are you in trouble? Are you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, do you, can you, who are you? Uh, uh, hi. Hi. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I failed to introduce myself. Um, you can call me Devin. Uh, hi, Devin. Hi. Um, I, I work here for the festival. I, I, I typically work out front just getting people into the attractions they want to see. Any correlation to the circus? I, I don't work for the circus, no. Uh, just Excellent. here, staff of the then festival. Then, yes, help. Okay. Um... Yeah, you know what? Um, great, how about you come with me for a moment? Okay. And he leads you a bit further away from the dining tents where there are still a lot of people who can overhear you. Um, a little bit more toward the staff areas. Um, and once he sort of settles in, he, he gets you sat down. <sighs> uh, right, yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, I might be able to help you. Um, if you can help me with a little something. Uh, right, um... I think I can get you out of here, probably put you on a covered carriage south, put a bit of gold in your pocket so you can make some distance from whatever you're trying to get away from. Um, but if you wouldn't mind helping me out in return, uh, you see, we're, we're commissioning a new statue of the Banebreakers to go where the old commemorative plaque used to be. Um, we hired a theater company to pose for the sculptor, uh, but they have flaked out, I'm afraid. Um, if you're willing to just model for us for literally a few minutes, I can pay you and have you on your way. It's also, it's it's out of the beaten path. It's not in the public oh. area. Gold. Yeah, no, we, we're we offering gold for that. Five gold for the for the position. Okay, yes, absolutely. Great. Uh, yeah. Is it, I'm, I'm going to be on the statue? Well, yes, we're, we're you, we'd be using you sort of as a template for... We have C. Cleese coming over to sculpt you. Uh, we're very excited to have her. Um, yeah, it's not going to be you exactly, necessarily. Yeah. It'll be you. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, uh, follow me. Um, and he leads you back through, uh, through again, not the main thoroughfares of the festival, but around back behind the tents in the staff walkways and such, and then uh, into what appears to be like a green room style tent where he opens a flap and waves an arm for you to enter. I'll walk right in. Just a few minutes. I have to wrangle up a few other people, but uh, it'll start momentarily. And she'll just kind of like collapse flat onto the floor. <sighs> okay. Okay. Meanwhile, Astrid. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Astrid, you and your mother find yourselves in the throng of festival goers enjoying a cornucopia of delights. There's food, games, knickknacks, collectibles, and some rather solid prices on herbs. Uh, would you please describe yourself to us and tell us a bit about what you find yourself up to right now? Yeah, Astrid is a uh, half-elf. She has long blonde hair pulled to the side in a braid, wearing kind of fine uh, finery, a um, little bit with traveling pants, but still looking kind of posh. Um, she's here for merchant work, so she wants to have the best face forward. And right now she has her satchel and her potion bottles on her hip. And she's just kind of looking around with her mother. Yeah, that kind of a outdoorsy, rugged chic. Yeah, <laughs> outdoorsy chic. Okay, that's what we're gonna. That's I'm putting that on my notes. Oh no, please no. Nope, outdoorsy <laughs> chic is in the notes. Uh, sure. Well, as yeah, as you um, ambulate about, um, looking at the various uh, various sellers, their wares, uh, some of which you've never seen in your life before. Again, this is like one of the big, uh, the hubs of traders from all over the world to present what they make to an international audience. Um, but as you do explore the various offerings around you, uh, you notice that your mother catches sight of someone, almost like out of the corner of her eye, and then swiftly look away and like try to not be visible. 
Are you okay? What's uh, wrong? Um, yeah, no, no, I'm fine. Um, I, sorry. I, that's, there's, a, that's a lie. I, Mom, you're not a good liar. There's um, an old friend of mine from the old guild uh, okay. over there, uh, Lorelei, and I just I haven't spoken to her in a long time, and we left things on kind of an awkward note. Um, well, do you think you should maybe talk with her then? Kind of fix things? I mean, if it's a bad note, you don't want to leave that. I mean, you don't have to. I'm, I see some herbs I really want to grab. And then as you uh, pitch that to her, you hear just a few feet away, um, Alette. And Alette just turns and goes, Lorelai, hi. Uh, I try not to laugh. <laughs> and uh, Lorelai approaches and uh, they begin to discuss. Um, however, in that moment, as the conversation begins, we're actually going to cut over now to Jibe. Uh, Jibe, my friend, oh my goodness, life in this world is a beautiful adventure. Yes. And you are not one to pass up soaking it all in. This festival is an absolute smorgasbord for the senses. Uh, virtually every proclivity served here in one mm. form or another. And in fact, we find you in the throes of quite the gamble several hands deep in a game of Ferryman's Gambit, a game of deception where you try to convince your opponents to ferry over cards to you that complete your sets while ferrying cards to them that will mess with theirs. Would you please describe yourself to us and tell us how you play this next hand? Sure. Uh, Jibe is a, I would say like a mid-height cat. That's <laughs> fair, yeah. Uh, End of description. <laughs> That's all we need. Now. Perfect. The, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, look up to backseat. No, um, uh, uh, with uh, yellow, orange, and brown uh, markings. Sort of uh, these sharp uh, and yet deep purple eyes. Uh, a sort of purple vest and maybe like a white undershirt. Nice. Um, that is. Uh, it's 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 a good shirt, but it's it's clearly something that you want to wear to keep yourself warm on the sea. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um. And his general demeanor is he's got one sort of arm slumped over the chair, as he's kind of like looking at his cards and playing with everybody else, uh, and goes, "I don't uh, I I don't know the rules of this game very well." <laughs> oh boys. <laughs> okay. You know what, son? I'll help you out. Uh, yeah, so you want to look at your hand there, and uh, yes. you find yourself holding any of the black cards with a little swirl on the top, by chance. Uh, okay, and uh, Jab will look through his cards. Uh, oh, uh, the black swirl, yes, I, 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 quite a few. Uh, yeah, so you uh, just put that face down in front of you, and I'll set one down, too. Okay. Great. Now, we now have the, uh, uh, what we call the fairy round, where we all switch these cards. And you want to complete your sets if you can, but you know, you boy, you just handed me the final set I needed. And as he reaches for the card you just put down, what yeah. does he actually grab? Uh, it's definitely not a swirl card. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not a swirl card. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Do me a favor. Um, yep. Let's see how well this next play goes for you. Roll me a sleight of hand. Perfect. Here we go. I believe. Uh, all right, we're doing sleight of hand. Beautiful. Hey, uh, so this is going to determine the cadence of the entire series. Mm -hmm. That's true. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> <No> pressure. <laughs> we're fine. It's not me. Here we, we go. Guys are good. You always have a plus seven. seven so Roll plus seven. Yes. So <laughs> get a nat twenty. We want to take that almost concern, thirty. Put yeah. it in a pocket. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Save it for later yeah. in the game. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that's going to be an eighteen. Let's go! Okay, nice. It's gonna be a good one. Uh, that's the great thing with expertise, right? You can have the most mediocre role, and it's like, that was great. That was pretty good. That's pretty yeah, good. I'm okay that. with it. Um, <laughs> I'm really good at this. Uh, perfect. So he pulls up the card. And Jab's like looking around. You said you never played before. Uh, that's correct. I've never played at this table before. <laughs> and he flips the card over. And you see what appears to be a red sword on it. And he drops his hand. And you see, aside from that red sword, he had all of the swirlies in his hand. <laughs> However, picking up your card, what symbol do you find on the one you just picked up? 
the one I picked up, mm -hmm. uh, I've got a red sword. And you realize that you have just completed the final set you needed. In fact, you have now four perfect sets of every symbol in your hand. And you you take the pot. Is this is this good? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get any of the swirls. I did. <laughs> All the old fellows get up, they push their chairs in, they spit on the ground or saunter off back deeper into the uh, into the festival. <laughs> and you have a pot now sitting in front of you of about 15 dars or silver coins and a dozen small red drops of Wezi, which are the glass currency of Kirahar, where you're from. Um, something very popular to gamble and trade with during the Bainsbrake Festival. Um, as you gather that all up, uh, you hear a squishing and a sloshing from behind you, uh, and a friendly-looking festival barker holds out a flask for you. Thank you very much. Mighty fine play there, lad. Uh, have a drag of this on me. Believe it or not, it's Norwegian Kachasa. Might well be from one of the last bottles in the whole world. Well, outside of Kessaress, at least. No one's getting in there anytime soon. Uh, a quick little uh, bit of character information for everybody. Uh, Jibe picks up accents very well. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> yes. I love it. Uh, he thinks for a moment. Did you always sound like that? Uh, I speak the way that I uh, 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 I hear. Oh, <laughs> it's right, probably okay. the easiest way to put it. What could I, I what, what, uh, what, uh, I couldn't, how could I pay you back for this? This is fantastic. Oh, no, please, it, it's on me. It's honestly one of the finest boozes you'll ever sample. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Happy and, Bane's break. Oh, ha happy Bane's break to you as well. It feels like I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> and do you take a swig of the, I do. Of the booze? I do. Um, it, it's really true to his word. It is nearly an indescribable concoction. It's sweet like sugar cane, but smooth and almost creamy on the palate. You know it's alcohol, but it has so little bite. It's almost uplifting. Oh, this is just, uh, this is fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, sorry, the voice is still tripping me out. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you like it, though. Um, I'll admit, uh, I came over here with a bit of an ulterior motive, if I can be honest with you. Um, if you are looking for novel experiences, have you ever, by chance, tried your hand at modeling? Jibe cannot turn down an interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> cannot say no. This is a huge flaw um, and gets him into trouble constantly. And also, as the boost kicks in, I think his like affectation adaption starts to get muddled a little yeah. bit. Um, so I uh, would be quite interested in something like that. Uh, great. I, wow, I was hoping, I was expecting I'd have to sell it a bit more, but that's fantastic. Yeah, you're you're merely standing in uh, for a statue of a hero, and we'll throw you the five gold for the trouble. And you know what? Because you were so, uh, so, uh, f so willing to assist us, mm -hmm. you can keep the kishasa on me. <gasps> wow. You are quite a friend. And Jibe shakes his hand. And it's a nice, firm shake. A bit rough and callous, but, I mean, you're used to that. Yeah. Working at sea. Uh, and yeah, so he leads you through the crowds into a tent where he holds the flap open for you and allows you to enter. Thank you kindly. Uh, and on that, uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to jump over to Neela. Neela, beer eh, biter. That's me. You're, <laughs> you're no stranger to a good party. And they may call it a festival here, but what's a festival but an outdoor party during the day? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always say. <laughs> Every narrative intro is like your inner voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, drinks, food, maybe a spot of gambling or swindle here or there, but that's not quite why you found yourself here today. Uh, could you describe yourself for us and tell us what we currently find you up to? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Neela's actually uh, on the shorter side for a human, about five foot even. Um, uh, but like solidly built, um, hair that's like kind of like an auburn, dark auburn color, um, pretty long, um, but dressed as though she did just come from sea. The the finery that she's wearing has been like 
a little bit torn, it's a little bit salt stained, but clearly very proud of it still. Uh, big axe strapped to her back. Um, and uh, I'm doing my best to muddle around uh, the fancier stalls a little bit, um, where the little bits of like grass and stuff is, I think. <laughs> Um, it's important grass, right? It's, uh, mm. Very important grass. People yeah. seem to want it. They re- and it. It looks like it's expensive grass, and, uh, just, I need to find someone who sells expensive grass so they can help me find out uh, a couple of things. Now, it pains me to ask for this. <laughs> roll me perception, please. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla's Listen. just roll. <laughs> a grass roll. I'm roll for grass. Oh, which one do I roll? Okay, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> it immediately eats out of the tray. And what, what did it roll? What did it land on? A one! Yeah, of course! Oh, but outside the tray doesn't count! Outside the tray doesn't count! Okay, okay, outside the tray doesn't count! Roll a different dog! It has to be inside the tray. That one's gone. Okay, but there's gonna be a two, right? Yeah, probably. It's Oh no, it's a seven. I thought it was a two. What's that would have been, been awesome. That would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what's your bonus? It's a plus two. Okay, so it's a nine. nine. Boop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's below average. So this but is high for me. High for you, yes. No, we're all very proud That's of you. That's a crit for, for you. Thank you, thank you. That's a crit for you. <laughs> <laughs> we call it the Kaylee Spin. Thumbs up here. every time you roll higher than a five. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. It's really close uh, to ten. That's almost double digits. <laughs> so that will extend the time it takes for you to kind of wander around here and do this. And honestly, you feel like you've passed by some of these stalls three or four times. They all it's, the same. It's just, it's all grass. <laughs> it's all grass. You know, the colors might vary a little here and there, but once you've seen grass, you've seen all grass. <laughs> However, <laughs> sorry, I want to give you a moment to perceive grass there. <laughs> However, um, after about an hour and a half mm-hmm. of literally walking, it's not a large area, by the way, no, of not. walking circles around the grass quarter, um, <laughs> you do see a woman matching the description that Mira gave you, mm-hmm, an mm-hmm. older, darker complexioned elven woman with little white dot markings just around her eyes, um, dressed in a plush silver and lavender robe, with a large scarf to keep out the chill. And she's currently in conversation with a couple of other people. Um, one young half-elf woman and an older human woman uh, who look very much like they could possibly be related. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I approach. I'm gonna try and be polite, because this is strangers. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna approach and be polite and wait for the conversation to be done, because Mira told me that that's what you're supposed to do when you're talking to land numbers. And how far away do you stand? Um, I want to make sure that, I guess I, I want uh, Lorelai to see me. Mm, so okay. I would I would probably like be approaching from one angle and do that like awkward like edging a little bit closer so that like they know that I want the attention but like yes. trying not to interrupt. Like, when you're, in a, when you're in, a, in a grocery store, you kind of want to get yeah, the person's like, attention but you don't want to be like, hey, help me. Just, you know, just, just edging. A little bit. Perfect, I'm, I'm perfect. really out of my element here, man. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, uh, Lorelai does notice you out of the corner of her eye. And there's just a moment where you both notice this. Uh, Lorelai kind of looks at you and almost like drifts off for a moment. I, I'm sorry, what were you saying? Uh, uh, I think there's somebody trying to get your attention. <laughs> oh, um, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Alette, it was so good to see you again. Um, let's please uh, catch up properly sometime soon. And um, Astrid, yes, is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, pleasure. Your mother is a uh, very lovely woman. We used to go, I uh, could tell you of our adventures back in the day, um, but perhaps uh, another time. I love uh, that. It's been a pleasure, thank you. Um, and Lorelai leaves that conversation and moves over to, uh, over to you, Neela. Um, hello, I'm sorry, did you, uh, need something? Uh, yeah, sorry, um, uh, I've been looking f- for you, not in, like, a creepy way, uh, but oh, in a, just a, just a, a, a way, uh, <clears throat> uh, my, uh, foster mother, Mira, told me to come find you, um, I have a, I have this, uh, I have this just 
relic from when I was a child, and she said you might be able to tell me more about it. Yes, um... Sorry, was that direct? I'm, no, I'm, told, I, 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 I'm told I should... should small... T- I, the weather! <laughs> <laughs> it's chilly. Uh-huh. You know, autumn being what it is. Yeah. I remember you, um... What? No, I, I apologize. I remember, um... I know Mira, and uh-huh. I, I understand what you are asking me. Mm. Um, hi, hi. I, I'm, I'm Laura, I'm here. Uh, uh, Nila, Nila, be about it, so, sorry, yeah. Pleasure to, pleasure to meet you. Um, and she begins to, she's, she's taking glances at the mm-hmm. amulet as you're talking. Um, and just for, for my knowledge, did you also bring the fabric um, yes. itself? Uh, okay, good. Now, of course, you do whatever with that that you want. I just wanted to know. Guaranteed, I've already forgotten about it until, <laughs> like, I've, until she starts looking at this and be like, yeah. oh, and the uh, and the, uh, uh, it came or I came really wrapped in this. Uh, and she she takes it for a moment, glances at it, and rolls it back up. Um, it's got like stuff on it. Yes. I can't. Uh, you know, I I'm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm rubbish with these languages these days, and I, I can't I can't uh, keep Same. them all in my head. Yeah, me either. Uh, it seems. And I lost all of my notes um, after I moved from Polyria to the Elders' Meet. Um, yes, so I'm afraid I uh, can't be of much help. I'm so sorry. You uh, be sure to enjoy the festival. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, I should looking at it, I guess. It is she. Do you have any reaction to the amulet or the? You would have noticed at least that she has a dodgy sort of demeanor about her. Um, we all really noticed that, I think. Uh, <laughs> it's very subtle. <laughs> um, and when she looked at the at the parchment itself, uh, the cloth rather. Um, she did seem to sort of like vaguely just like glance over it, but you can't tell, and you can roll me an insight to gather more intel if do you it, want. Do it, do it, do it. I'm afraid of this one too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? An insight? Yes. 17. Oh. Okay, okay. The impression you get is that upon looking at the um, cloth, she took only the most cursory glance at it, almost to sort of uh, fulfill your expectation of her looking at it, but that she either already knew what she was going to see or didn't care to delve any further into it for some other reason. But the contents don't seem to surprise her. She seems to like look at it very briefly and like just immediately roll it up and, and pass it back to you. I mean, if it's a if it's a concern of uh, compensation, I could pay you or. Oh no, um, oh, I, I appreciate that. No, no, it's not compensation at all. I uh, merely, um, I just don't have my tools uh, or all my notes from back in those days, and I just simply don't have the mind for it these days. I'm mostly retired. You, you, um, you can lose. You can lose your mind. You can lose that. Well, it's you know, it's it's linguistics of this sort are a knack. And I, um, ah, it's not as sharp as I used to be, I'm afraid. But that, you, so nothing, you don't know anything about any of this? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Um, I, I, I can't help you, I'm so sorry. Is there someone who does have a knack who is younger or so? Is that <laughs> how that works? I don't. Uh, I, you know, um,. Off the top of my head, uh, there, there could certainly be more people um, in the Travis Peak, perhaps in the uh, perhaps uh, in, in South March in the more learned circles. Uh, but I, I don't really, I don't really know much more about it. I'm sorry. All right. Well, uh, thanks. It's uh, it's always nice to meet some of uh, Mira's uh, old adventuring uh, friends. Um, I yes. hope you en- enjoy the, the the festival as well. Thank you. I do give Mira my best. It's uh, I will. Time. I will. Thanks. Um, she dips her head a bit and with an awkward wave, makes her way back into the crowd. Um, just as she does, though, you hear footsteps and a hearty jangling of coins from behind you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's take it easy. in my element. <laughs> there yes. we go. A friendly looking fellow uh, who appears to be a festival barker is holding a bag of coins out. 
You know, this might sound a wee out of the blue, but if you're willing to stand in for a statue carving, I've got a bag of gold with your name on it. Are you talking to me? <laughs> to, to me? Mm. To... How much gold? Uh, five. <laughs> How much gold? Six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I appreciate you rolling for yourself. I rolled a six. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That was great. Yeah, and then that's an exactly correct offer. Uh, he does indeed lead you through the crowds and into that same uh, tent. Uh, meanwhile, Luca. <gasps> <laughs> While you've read plenty about it, actually being here at the festival is a little overwhelming. It is an absolute height of hustle and bustle and a veritable cavalcade of smells, sounds, the knocking of elbows with hundreds of festival goers all assault your senses. Would you please describe yourself for us and tell us what you find yourself up to right now? Okay. Bear with me. Lucas and Eric Hawk are monk. Six foot three. Bear with me. Big bird. Bird with me. <laughs> Big bird. Um, he has all black feathers. Have you, you know those pillows where you like, do I have to explain it any further than that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. White trim. So underneath Ooh. the feathers went like, you get the point. Tall, masculine. It's reversible. <laughs> now is it a bird or a bear? Bird with you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> He's a bird. Okay, got it. Sometimes he's a bear. reversible bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, very tall, masculine. Uh, he, he's 6'3", he's so he's probably taller than a lot of people around him. Um, you look at him and he's like this intimidating looking big dude. Um, posture, lanky. Talks like, um, excuse me, out of the way please. And uh, he's, he's just looking around, seeing what's around, being extremely overwhelmed by everyone that's around him. Sometimes his, his wings were just like, ah. sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Just cuddled in and And, and you do, I mean, you find yourself uh, at least a full head and a solid uh, three inches of shoulder larger than any other person you encounter at this he definitely festival. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you definitely, you make a statement. Um, and. As you explore around the festival a bit, uh, you actually notice, just as you pass at a stall, where there appears to be a halfling uh, working up and down a ladder, a brush in hand, putting the final touches on a wall-sized painting. That's beautiful. He takes his notebook and he just like... <laughs> oh, I have to ask him. And he starts to walk in the direction of the painting. Uh, yes, as you approach it, uh, it seems to depict a field of battle. It's a massive panorama. Oh. Uh, a red-haired woman clad in plate standing amidst her victory. Oh. Um, excuse me? Oh, yes. How long did that take? Oh, uh, yeah, I've been working on this sucker for... Feels like the better part of six months, just... You know, we had the basic thing done a couple months back, but I, you, you never quite, you always see something else you want to just tweak a little bit. Yeah. Kind of hoping that I'll be able to sell it here at the festival so I can just have it out of my hands. Have you tried adding a little bit more detail here and here and here? And he shows you a sketch that's almost like a direct copy of what's on the wall. Roll me a persuasion. Let's go. Uh, uh, I am very scared. Please roll well. Oh no. Okay. Uh, uh. That's a 19. Ooh. Wow. Um, he looks at your, he grabs your sketchbook and pulls it close and looks it over and looks at the painting. Shit. <laughs> Talk to the language, please. <laughs> With a 19, you can get away with that. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. Um, oh, wow, okay. Uh, and he grabs a brush up and starts putting in, like, uh, like topping the tops of flowers in the foreground with small yellow petals because, obviously, the battle happened in late spring and they would have been flowering. 
um, a detail he totally missed before, and starts like sketching in other little things like that. Um, and as, as he adds and the painting begins coming even more to life, uh, you hear a, a rustle of some footsteps next to you as you admire the work. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, it's a man dressed in the colorful stripes and frills of a festival barker. Admirer of art, eh? What makes you say that? You're admiring the art. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Who, who, who are you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, look, bit of an art fan myself. Hi, oh. my name is Devin. Pleasure oh. to meet you. I'm a barker here at the festival. Um, and you know, I saw you in this tent. Got me kind of thinking. I actually have a way. You could be a part of the next great artistic work here, if you'd like. <gasps> you'd even have a chance to meet C. Cleese. <gasps> Who, of course, you recognize as the legendary Eric Hogren, uh sculptor. Get out of town. I will not. <laughs> we. I want to scratch that and say, get out of monastery. <laughs> get out of monastery. <laughs> get out of Tayo. <laughs> well, we managed to retain her to sculpt new statues of the Bane Breakers where the old plaque used to be. If you'd like to stand in for it, I can also pay you some coins. Stand, for your time. sit, lay down, sleep, stay awake, eat food, I'll do anything. Whoa, right. <laughs> yeah, we can give you an apple or something. Uh, great, yeah, if you'd like to come with me. For an apple? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> as, Where do we go? Where do we go? As, as Luke is very willing to accept payment in apple. Uh, <laughs> I haven't eaten at least six hours. All right, um,. How sad was that going to be when it's all about the hour that you gain? I had to go okay. <laughs> To be fair, he pulls an apple out of his bag. It is a Granny Smith. <gasps> uh, but he, he pulls one out. Look, not, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I rolled a three. You get a Granny Smith. Oh, uh, and then leads you uh, through the bustle of the festival towards the tent. Did you sketch something there? I totally sketched the Granny Smith apple. Oh, Hell yeah. This is for you. Oh, oh wait. Oh. My God, you defiled my fingerprints on the apple. Holy crap. Yeah, I have your DNA now. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, well, I'm now nervous about this transaction. <laughs> Follow me. Uh, and he leads you into the tent uh, to await the sculptor. Which takes us back to Astrid. You... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could No, no, have, no, that was very good. Yeah. I could not have planned that better. That was, <laughs> that was incredible. Fantastic. Um, Astrid, I'm you sorry. and your mother walk away. You've wandered away from Lorelei now. Mm -hmm. um, and she is sort of like busily playing with um, various uh, bottles of, of herbs and tinctures at a, at a tent, but you see her mind's kind of distracted. You really shouldn't... Uh... I'm just gonna take one of them and set them aside. Let's oh. not add that to the healing. I'm sorry, I'm that miles would be, away. Yeah, um, you really are. It's just, it's been a long time since I've seen Lorelai, and I mean, she seems fine, <sighs> thankfully, but things just, um, it doesn't matter now. Uh, a long time ago, and yeah. we're, we're good now. Um, That's good. Yeah. We can talk about it later. Yeah, tonight. for sure. We, we still need to get um, some of the cherry pips uh, for, um, uh, Lucerne's tincture. Yeah. Um, so we should probably just grab those now. Yeah. Um, I spotted something on another soul. Can you grab those and I'll grab that? Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and she begins like going through the, the herbs to look for the uh, the pips that she needs. And what are you looking at? I'm actually looking at some of the poisons. Ooh. Like things that can be used for poisons. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah. Roll me a uh, perception or investigation. Oh, no. Definitely don't Let's tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell mom. That's a seven. Um, I don't know much about immediately poisons. Immediately die. Uh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good no, 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 What a lucky number. <laughs> uh, no, you, here's the trick, is there is a, uh, what are, at this stall, they're not strictly speaking referred to as poisons. Right. Um, you have a section of like noxious reagents, um, a section of nightshades, um, a section of uh, caustic elements, as they kind of have to use couch it in like more polite right. verbiage, not say like, this kills you if you want to murder people with it. Right. Um, and again, a lot of poison ingredients also have medicinal uses if blended correctly. Uh, so, but the thing is, you don't 
really recognize any of them super clearly. No. Um, you could certainly pick out one to try and like get a better understanding of it if you want to just like pay a bit of coin and yeah, uh, I want to just pick a random one and yeah, um, put that in my pocket. Describe to me an herb that you pluck out of the bin there. Um, I'm gonna pull out one that is like almost like a stem mm -hmm. and it's um, purple with black, like a black purple stem mm. that looks like it was probably more, more like bark. Yes, um, there's actually a woman behind the counter who comes up and uh, puts on like a little magnifier and looks at the bark. Uh, yes, okay. Um, if you'd like to get just one stem of the uh, the brindle bark. Yeah. Uh, bark. Wonderful, okay. That's going to be one silver. Okay. And I will give her one silver for it. Not even gonna haggle. Now make sure um, not to allow this to contact your skin for too long, okay. as That's it will good. leave very minor burns. It's best kept in a sealed container. Okay, I'm gonna grab actually one of my um, files mm -hmm. and put it inside of it. Yeah, it. great. You're gonna have to like crack it in half a little bit and like get them in there, but you can totally do that. Perfect. Um, as you do, um, and at that point, do you uh, leave the stall as well? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll head back. Your mother approaches you kind of in the center of the walkway with a little bag full of cherry seeds um, and uh, says, oh, I got all of these for two pips. That's actually a really good deal. And it's a bag of like five seeds. That's not bad. Um, and as you begin to converse a bit, uh, a portly, amiable seeming man, dressed in brightly colored stripes and frills, uh, like a festival barker, taps your shoulder. Uh, uh, hello. Sorry, pardon me, miss. Um, it seems like this fell out of your satchel there. And he holds out a stem of lace-like uh, yellow flowers, which is actually an herb you purchased earlier. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you. I didn't even notice. Yeah, I, it's easy to bump into people and get shaken about a bit here at the festival. Um, it, by the way, it, it seems like you two are having quite the time here. Um, I, I, I couldn't help but notice you uh, purveying, uh, perusing the various wares here at the festival. Yeah. It's always good to see people who are passionate about the event. My mom loves this festival. This is the first time I've ever been, but she's from Deltas, so. Oh, you're a fan. And and he turns to a lad who's like, like yeah. Um, been coming here for years and years and years. Oh, um, now that I think about it, uh, there might be a way for you to participate a bit more in the festival if you're interested. Uh, yeah, I would love to know more. Well, you see, we're building a statue of the Bane Breakers where that old plaque used to be, and our mar our models, rather, uh, bailed with hardly a word, I'm afraid. Mm. Uh, if you were willing to stand in for a bit, we'd put some coin in your pocket. And he turns to your mother, it wouldn't be long at all, ma'am, I swear. Uh, and your mother's like, uh, you have to do I, it. Okay. Like, how many, how many I, chances do you have? That's amazing. I know how much that's, this means to you. So I will absolutely do this. I'm going to be fine. You know I, what? I'm going to go grind some flowers. It's going to okay. be great. Here, I'm going to hand her the yellow leaf one. I dropped it, so I don't know if that's going to damage it. It's fine. Okay. I'm going to go <laughs> grind this up. We're good to go. Okay. And then I'll just come back. Do you want to meet at the, um, the tavern? Yes, uh, the tavern is great. Um, okay. I'll be probably about an hour. I, I can't imagine it's like much more than that. Uh, yes, I'll meet you back. I love okay. you. And love she gives you like a big, a big hug. Have fun. I'll try. Make friends. <laughs> Who am I going to make friends with? All I right. don't know. Other models. Okay. Oh my God, my baby's really famous. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Barker leads you through the crowd to an unassuming tent next to one of the presentation stages, pulling the flap aside for you. I go inside. And that brings us to Priviv. No. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a chance. <laughs> Priviv, Pry, if I may. For you? Of course. <laughs> the world is hazy, dreamy. You're sitting with Vijan Pris in the inner sanctum of your chapter, sipping at a hot brew of Kirahari lovegrass and prickly pear, always a favorite of his. I know you feel it. I think we've all noticed that empty sense as though a part of you were dormant or asleep. It's like something that was there before is just gone now. And she puts down the mug uh, onto the table, but she doesn't like let go of it. She just enjoys the warmth of the, of the glass. I do not know how it will happen, but one way or another, 
we must find a way to wake up. And on that, with a gasp, your eyes shoot open, and you find yourself awake. The ground beneath you is soft, damp, brass. Clutched in one hand, you find a familiar sheet of folded, wax-sealed paper, torn in half in the other. What appears to be a small silver fork with the emblem of the Republic Senate stamped into it. Could you describe yourself for us and tell us a bit about what you do next? Uh, Prithiv is sitting on the ground. She immediately winces away from the light because she's a drow uh, with dark purple skin. Uh, she pulls her hood over like very angular features and pale eyes uh, and a little affectation of inky black makeup like a teardrop. Uh, coming down one cheek, uh, throws her hood forward. It's the color of, it's wax canvas and the color of uh, old parchment or bleached bone. Uh, and it kind of goes down into long robes that cover every inch of her body. And she pushes herself up to standing from this like soft, muddy grass and there's not a stain on it. She is immaculate as always. And she comes to her full height, slender and tall, um, probably just under six feet tall, and sort of brushes herself, uh, even though there's nothing out of place. And she tucks the fork into a pocket, and it slips into like, uh, like what looks like a narrow slit, but you can, you have a sense that it goes to somewhere deeper. Yeah, but she uh, goes to put the wax seal away, and won't let it go. So she's just kind of walking, rolling over that shattered seal in her hand. And is this like strange act of stillness and confusion in the midst of uh, like the carnival going on, uh, festival going on around her and behind her? She like looks out at the people and tries to figure out what she, where she is, and there's nothing. Well, indeed, about not thirty yards from you, you do see tents, banners. And you hear the sounds of festivity. As your eyes clear and refocus a bit, you notice the text on one of the banners near the front. This must be the annual Bainsbrig Festival, which means that you are in the province of Imperia, in the continent of Tarif. That much comes back to you. The smells of fried foods, floral arrangements, the sound of instrumental arrangements, and the clamor of the crowd are a little harsh on the senses, but your mind begins to settle, and perhaps this place will be an opportunity to regain your bearings. Uh, she kind of slowly like shakes her body out, um, and uh, she's not unaccustomed to having to come to her senses uh, in strange environments, so she kind of goes through the like, how long have I been down? How are my muscles doing? Okay, we're okay, and walks forward into the festival. Wonderful. As you are sort of like doing that little systems check, so to speak, and your mind is, is beginning to clear and you enter the festival, you suddenly become aware of, it's, it's faded at first, sort of distant, and then becomes more clear, someone speaking to you. But you're not entirely sure how long they've been at it. Um, glancing over, you see a fellow dressed like a festival barker with lurid stripes and frills adorning a long coat. Miss, you feeling all right there? And he holds out a water skin. And you can't recall clearly if you asked for it or not. It's all still a bit of a buzz. I think she licks her lips, but takes a step back anyway. Who are you? Uh, I'm sorry, um, name's Devin. I work here at the festival. I'm a barker out front. I just couldn't help but notice you seemed uh, a little bit distant. Want to make sure you're all right. I know things get a bit crazy here. Uh, she doesn't respond right away and just sort of regards him. Can I make an insight check on this guy? Yeah! Who is he? I love how no one's tried that. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. I was uh, paid not to. I was paid not to. <laughs> 17. I'm running out of a cage. I don't care. Yeah. No, you, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can fuck with that. That makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, so your read on him is that he seems genuine. He seems... Uh, uh, entirely benevolent, but does give you the impression that he's looking for something from you, or he, he wants to, he wants to say something he's not said yet. 
uh, I think she just sort of uh, folds her hands in front of her and it, like strikes a pose that she knows to project forward as a cultist of Yamiel. What do you need? Oh, uh, I was just going to say, I, I know all of this can be a bit overwhelming. Um, and if you'd like to get out of the the noise and the chaos a bit, I can take you into one of the holding tents. It's much quieter, more you do Low not key. need to pretend uh, that any of this interaction is for my benefit. What do you need? Well, if you'd be willing to do me a little bit of a favor, yeah. I would be happy to compensate you for your time, get you off the beaten path for a little bit while you recover, if you're willing. Recover? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to assume. You, just, you seemed like you might have been coming back from something a little bit. Mm. Okay. I'll follow you. <laughs> um, at that moment, <laughs> at that moment as well, you you become conscious of the book dangling at your side, almost like your attention is drawn to it as you talk with the the Barker. Uh, wonderful. Uh, well, okay. Well, you just need to stand in for our sculptor for a minute. If he starts talking, I stopped paying active attention and I <laughs> and follow he just the chain around my about like how great it's going to be yeah. and it's going to go right over there. <laughs> and I pick up uh, this book. It's like six. It's a six-inch tall book, but it's as wide as it is tall, so it's more like a cube. And just start uh, leafing through the pages while paying. He needs roughly 5% of my attention in order for me to process this, so fine. You, you're, you're flipping through the pages, and in the way it often does, you receive an impression, um, not necessarily a direct, obvious of text, Yeah. Um, but more, <laughs> I will use that sound effect all of once. <laughs> <laughs> That's your one, you get one. You get one. That, was, that was it, sorry. I'm writing yeah. down a counter for that exact sound. <laughs> Oh boy, um, it's more bits and pieces of information that in your mind seem to coalesce into a meaning. Yeah. Um, and you have, you, you get this impression from it drawn in inky black swoops. Again, not, not the messaging that you're accustomed to. Mm. Not the, it, it lacks the presence of Yamiel. It lacks her grace, but nonetheless, it is speaking to you, and the impression you get from it is to remain, to stay, not to leave the festival. Um, yeah, she flips from page to page, and these are not like sequential pages. They're all from different books and texts and diagrams. And eventually she gets the meaning and sighs and snaps the book, book shut, and it echoes. It's weirdly loud. You can stop talking. I will follow wherever you go. So let's go. Right, okay. Um, you promised coin though, so I did I do did. part. I did promise coin. Ten? Um, Ten gold? Uh, well, typically we, we, we do five mm -hmm. travers for this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> roll, roll persuasion for that staring contest. <laughs> yes, please roll good. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Six! Speaking of which, <laughs> well, and now that you mention it, I'm willing to give you six. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Tink. Uh, he leads you through the crowd and into a thankfully less stimulus heavy tent. Although, I will remark on something. As you move through, and you begin following um, the fellow ahead of you. You can't help but notice out of the corner of your eye, someone who just, just briefly meets your eye and then seems to very pointedly, intentionally look away and avert their gaze. He's a very old elven man clad in a ragged black tunic and robes that have seen decades of rough travel. And you can't help but notice his piercing electric blue eyes. He's holding something wrapped up in his arms, looking like perhaps a book, and he walks with a cane, and he does seem a little nervous, like he's glancing around. <clears throat> oh, 
Do I have the opportunity to slip away and just uh, try to sidestep, go and find him in the crowd? You certainly could. I mean, the barker ahead of you, Devin, seems like he's sort of just like toddling about, talking about, oh, that tent went up about, well, we first built that three <laughs> years ago, never took it down. It's actually tied to the foundation. Work. He knew I was overstimulated. <laughs> he's gonna talk. I for sure dro just keep dropping He back. is truly a barker. Yeah. <clears throat> um, wow. But yes, you can certainly approach this man if you'd like to. Hello. Oh, uh, I, I, no, no, uh, apologies. Um, so, sorry, I, uh, I didn't mean to get yeah. your attention. Mm, oh. I'm just an admirer of books. Oh, um, me too. I, um, I like books. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, how can I help you? Oh, I... I'm new to uh, the festival, and I was just hoping to see a friendly face. Ah, uh, um, I, I, I apologize if I was staring. Um, I, I was merely lost in thought, uh, reminded of a dream I'd had last night. I'm I, I, so sorry if I did disturb you in any way. Oh, not at all. Oh. What was your dream? too much. I was merely, um... Nothing really matters. I suppose I just lacked a bit of courage and a bit of faith and well, I I dreamt of something that helped me to realize that I needed to do what I must. I'm sorry. I know this is all terribly vague. I, I really, I shouldn't keep you. I'm truly quite all right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I should be elsewhere. I think the Barker thinks that you're still following him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I reach out and I just very lightly touch his elbow. And I'm just going to cast Guidance. Ooh! Oh, oh word? Okay. <laughs> word? I will keep that in mind. Awesome. Okay. Um... He nods to you and then disappears back into the crowd. And I head back to the Barker. <laughs> <laughs> Only 15 more minutes of him talking. It'll be fine. So much the same. I don't care. <laughs> I love information and I hate this. <laughs> and you know the chicken wings here are actually my... Uh, uh, <laughs> I hide more in the hood. <laughs> I'm not assuming you have drawstring. Yeah. <laughs> drawstring hood. <laughs> That's canon now. Oh yeah. god. Um, all of you are now gathered together in this holding tent immediately adjacent to the main stage as you witness uh, Pry, this tall drow woman brought in last by the Barker. Every well. time another person enters the tent individually, Curse like jumps behind something and like cowers and hides. <laughs> Every time the flap starts to open to the tent, she just you, you good? Yes, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. You, are you hot? Do you, you, you all right? And she like looks individually around the room mm -hmm. and she'll kind of like step on out. Hello, I am cursed, don't tell. All right. Neela, want a drink? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, oh no, thank you. <laughs> The second the smell of it. that Luca walks in, you go, huh? and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there's two. Oh, no. All right. He takes his notebook, because he can't talk right now, and he writes, hello, and he shows you the notebook. And Chris just peers up, and, and she has very, like, sharp teeth when she smiles, but oh. she looks up at you and just... <sighs> okay. And she'll, she'll come on out. <laughs> I sweep in. See two people ducking. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking. Yeah. I'm perched on like a higher like platform if that's possible. Oh, for Even sure. If it's yeah. just like mm -hmm. a if little like ledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There is like what appears to be a wardrobe with different costume options, and you could certainly like get like above that. And just like yeah, just popped up there and just kind of like smiles at you. Yeah. Hello. 
uh, as someone who like grew up uh, right at the border of like Kirahar, I just she looks a little relieved finally and just gives you a little nod. Okay. I'll pause the flask out if you want. Hey. Thank you very much. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Jive takes a big old sip. <laughs> That's your second flask of the day as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't worry about it. That's right, you can't keep it. Hang on. We're not doing it again. We're not, we're not doing it again. <laughs> What'd you do? It was a one more time. Of a gesture. <laughs> oh oh my counter! counter. Uh, it's it's time for my counter! That's two. We got the counter. What's Astrid doing in the room? Uh she's reading her herbalist book. She has like a it's a small one, it's usually on her side, and she's just kind of reading it right now. Um, kind of making eye contact with Neil every once in a while because we kind of saw each other, so she's like kind of curious about that. And indeed, um, as you all enter, uh, the, the room is sparsely decorated with small chairs lining its interior, enough for all of you and then some, and a table in the center with snacks and two pitchers, one of water and one a darker liquid that is perhaps wine. Um, another flap exits out the back of the tent, <laughs> leading to, you would assume, some of the staff-only areas of the festival. And uh, you all see each other. You've now sort of gathered in here. And as you're talking, you hear someone giving a presentation on the main stage. It's a woman's voice. <clears throat> and you catch just like the tail end of it. She says, In short, never once while I was writing the book did I imagine it would one day turn into all this. I'm getting a little on in years, so there will come a time when you'll need to suffer through someone much less charming giving these commencement addresses, but until that day arrives, I am very pleased to welcome you to the Bane's Break Festival. And yes, I promise, the next book is coming soon, even if I've been saying that for the last hundred years. And there's a round of applause, and you hear someone walking down the side stair of the main stage into the tent that you're currently in. An old gnomish woman. <laughs> Before and she comes in, I'm just like, that book's never coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Go home and write on it. Uh, an old gnomish woman dressed very comfortably and warmly, given the season, uh, which all ends up looking like a ball of yarn ambling down the steps, uh, walks through and looks at you all. Those of you familiar with popular nonfiction or the story of Bainsbury recognize an elderly Ava Mendax, the author of the work. And she rolls up and lights up a, a Huffleaf cigarette. <clears throat> so you're the new stand-ins, yeah? Ah, uh, you look great, just like the old stories. It's amazing they managed to get you all on short notice. Ah, uh, okay. And Ava offers a little tired little wave as she ambles out the back of the tent. Uh, C will be out here any minute. She'll take great care of you. Be sure to work on those heroic poses, all right? Go right, you guys are great. And <laughs> she leaves the tent. <clears throat> I'm sorry, who was that? That was Ava um, Mendax. Uh, exactly. She wrote the Legends of Bane's Break uh, book that the festival is based on. Oh, it's a book. It doesn't matter. They're a bit purple, but enjoyable. But They're pur purple? purple? Purple. Verbose. I can't be. No. <laughs> That's a word that people use. I, will I learned not a new be. word. I'm going to immediately forget it. I, I read the first. I read the first page once. Oh. Did you like it? It was very good. Yes. The table of contents. I've... Oh, that makes so much more sense. Oh. Yes. I don't usually get past the first page. They take. They take the books. Who takes the books from you? Uh, oh, um, hi. Uh, I just I came from the circus. The and circus. you like very much can see that she's wearing like very obvious circus <laughs> yeah. clothes. Yeah, they're, they're like no. very athletic and strappy with like the pointed toe sh uh, little slippers. We we don't get a, a lot of books, really. If we find books that somebody left in the like the seats, we can grab them usually for a minute and we can hide them in our clothes. And then if you can get to a little bit of reading before the before he finds your book, and he, that doesn't a name, darling. Yeah, do you want us to kill somebody for you? Oh. Wait, we're killing? Uh, I could. Jive leans Are forward. you okay? <laughs> <laughs> are, I mean, are you... How do I nicely put this? Um, has somebody hurt you? Oh, yes. Really? Okay, we're gonna talk about that. And I'm actually gonna like take Curse, like put my hand out to Curse and like move her away from the outside ring 
and like more towards the snack table. Like, have you, have you eaten today? Have a snack. Uh, I'm gonna pour her a glass and I'm gonna like look around at everybody and be like, I'm Astrid. I don't know if I told you. Hi, Astrid. Hi. Of course. Nice don't tell, please. Thank no, you. no. Um, that's gonna be. We're gonna find the festival barker and we're gonna. I'm. Oh no. No 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 no. no, 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 no needs not, to be an authority. Let's thing. actually not talk to anybody from the circus. No, ever not again. the circus. No, no, no. The I, festival. But like, listen, we don't want to tell anybody who will talk to anybody. No. I think it's gonna be okay. And Curse just takes like the tiniest piece of food and like breaks it in half and oh, takes no, no, half no. of it. I'm gonna take give her like the entire like the whole packet. And be like, take your time, have it, enjoy it. Our circus is bad. Pattern is something, like... huh? All of you hear a bit of arguing outside. Seemingly at the flap you entered through, though it's tough to make out the exact words, although cry. Mm. You recognize one of the voices as that old elven man you'd encountered just earlier. But again, you can't quite make out the words from where in the tent you're standing. What do you do? Hold. And I just turn and walk away. I don't know them yet. <laughs> I owe them nothing. Hold snacks. There's no snacking. You, you, you can probably still. And I just yeah. walk to the edge of the tent so I can hear better. You're okay. Yeah. The old elf is apparently arguing with a guard who's covering the entrance of the tent. And you hear the elf say, very well then, it doesn't matter. Just at least give them this. And then you hear footsteps retreating. The guard enters the tent, just in front of you, only at this point mere feet from you, uh, looking a bit confused. And he looks at you, Pry, and is holding a parcel wrapped in cloth in the shape of a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Some old man wanted you to have this. I, I couldn't let him in, but he said that I should give this to you. You don't have to keep explaining. My hand's been out for quite long enough. Okay. I love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone was, was like there? meant to be handed books, like you look like someone who's meant to Thank be handed you. books. Thank you. Oh, you can go back to Right, sorry. Now. And he goes back to guarding. <sighs> oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't that? know any of, oh, we're just gonna. What's it about? <laughs> I guess like, she's like, I was going to walk to a corner and deal <laughs> with this. We're all staring. Yep. And she's just sort of unwillingly. Will you read it to us? Is it a good story? Oh, my God. <laughs> if you want, we'll find it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're going to get past the table of contents this time. Unwrapping the apparently six layers of <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It just, it was one flap that opened and would immediately retape itself shut. <laughs> so I'm just. just a, a Russian nesting doll. Yes. <laughs> he wrapped it so well the for like 30 seconds. The book is this big, seconds. actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unwrapping it, you realize it's a first edition of Ava's book, The Legend of Bane's Break. There's also a handwritten note stuck to the cover. And it reads, keep this close. Do not make the same mistakes. Mm. And on the reverse side, a line in Old Aresian, Elvish, which reads, Pios parava pizetai posemi. I'll text you that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, could, you're reading this note? Mm-hmm. Um, can Jibe have sneakily sort of posted up behind you and also glancing? Because I also know Elvish. Yeah, of Did course. you read the Elvish out loud? No, that's okay. insane. I don't have to mouth <laughs> words. What? <laughs> <laughs> If you if you wouldn't have attempted to conceal this at all, and that's a freebie yeah, for you. For sure. You. I didn't stop anyone from also looking, but I, I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> She's an internal person. <laughs> Fair. No. Hello. What's the note? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I have to find out. Let's find out. <laughs> we'll find out together. <laughs> uh, oh, cool. Yeah, do you want to give me the translation, buddy? Yes. <laughs> I will give that for you. Uh, yes, so that translates roughly uh, the, 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 the several words in Elvish, at least, yeah. as I scroll down here, uh, translates roughly to um, sun, protect, um, a word like conceal, and a word like um, everlasting or like to to continue doing something. Are you familiar with old elven poetry? Sorry, that sounded very condescending. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, it roughly is uh, sun, protect, 
something close to conceal and something uh, approximating a continuance. Uh, no, no, but uh, it sounds very nice when you say it. <laughs> is that supposed to mean something? To me, yes. What does it mean? Hello, my name is Prithiv. Hi, I'm Neela. <laughs> Hi, I'm Neela. Um, you want a drink? No, why is everyone offering me drinks? And I very quickly Wait, slip it into my pocket. Who's offering drinks? <laughs> the barker. You don't offer me a drink. You look like you've not been for want of a drink in weeks. Thank you. Mm. I will happily read this to you. Thank you. Okay. And Curse will just kind of like shuffle over and sit very politely next to you. Oh, oh okay, now. <laughs> sure. Uh, and she actually begins reciting it because she's you ready. You must read the whole book aloud. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> improv the book. <laughs> I will take a dare. <laughs> uh, you know, I actually have the book. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. <laughs> That's a whole separate thing. Phenomenal. Um, however, a minute or two passes, yeah. and the back flap of the tent opens once more. An Eric Cochran woman adorned with beautiful flowers, dyes, and glitter worked into the feathers of her face and wearing a long-sleeved linen sort of half robe, half romper uh, garment with obviously holes in the back for wings, singed at the waist, uh, pops her head into the tent. Uh, Aste, beautiful models. It is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I am Cyclis. I will be sculpting you on this beautiful morning. Please come with. Oh no. I'm gonna take a couple snacks oh. and put them in my pocket. Yep. Danish, Danish. <laughs> I watch I Astrid and like, I will also hide some snacks. In I also account. just took them for curse, but <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I will, and then I'll follow out. Uh, great, yeah. She holds the flap open for you and allows you all to exit. Uh, she leads you just out the back of the tent, where you see a massive slab of black marble has been placed. Various festival staff go about their business um, in the background around you, and. C grabs a jar of some kind of paste and corrals all of you together. Okay, uh, closer, please. Thank uh, you. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, nice okay. and comfy. You yeah, might have to touch. touch. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, right. yes, you can. If you want, you can pull the wings in or make them big behind people. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, and oh like they're gusts. big. <laughs> they are big. Oh, they're beautiful. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Beautiful hero poses. Okay, I'm going to uh, form the template now. And how do each of you yes. pose yourselves? Oh my god. Yes. Uh, Curse oh. looks like she's posed a lot, naturally. So she's like up on both of her tiptoes and she puts her arms up this way. Um, and it like, she's so high on her toes that it looks like she's almost floating. That's actually really cool. Wow. Um, That's, yeah, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> I'll just like pull my ax out because it's like really the only thing that I got. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just get the axe out, kind of like put it over my shoulder, get my mask in the other hand and be like, eh? <laughs> I love the quizzical expression as well. Like, <laughs> I guess I'm a hero. Uh. <laughs> How about you, Jibe? Uh, Jibe is going to have both of his daggers out and he's going to like cross his arms and lean up against the slab. Um, I also just want to add really quickly that his eyes are on the flap like on the exit. So okay. he's got his daggers and it is like for show, but yeah. also he is keeping a keen sense on the entrance. Oh, Roger that. Uh, ooh, primitive, uh, remembering a bit about the like the kind of casters that were in this group originally. She actually drops into like a three point stance and is putting her hand out on the ground uh, as if she was doing like a big like runic uh, sigil work and then holds open her book. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You're all naturals, truly. Yeah. <laughs> I can only do this one way. And he pulls out his wings and he actually starts to like hover in place a little bit. Uh. And he has his, his hands out like this, um, but his facial expression is trying to be like super like masculine and ready, <laughs> but it's like masculine with a question mark at the end. <laughs> He's like, I'm tough? Yeah. <laughs> I'm tough. With so those cool. big bird biceps yeah, like, rocking. He is built, right? <laughs> but his 
whole demeanor is like, I'm built? <laughs> like, truly, you should not be able to fly. <laughs> it's a him verb. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh my god. That's fantastic. It's the merch. That's the merch. Yeah. I want to cut it there. Like, we're <laughs> yeah. we got I just it. want everybody. <laughs> Um, and Astrid. Uh, she just puts her hand out like she's gonna have a spell. Mm -hmm. Even though she knows how to do a spell, she's just gonna have her hand out and um, her other hand towards her stomach, just kind of like almost protecting a little bit. Very Renaissance. Yeah. yeah mm. Digging it. Nice. Awesome. Well, uh, C gets to work uh, smearing the paste across the surface of the marble, tracing the approximate shapes of your forms into the surface, and you can hear as she does a bit of sizzling as the paste almost soaks into the marble, delving deep to begin forming the shapes inside of the actual block itself. Um, <laughs> uh, as you hold your poses, though, you notice that the light around you um, dims just a bit. The sky was perfectly clear not a minute ago, but heavy clouds have begun to roll in. And not only that, you realize some of your hair is standing a little bit on edge, like a, a bit of static electricity is in the air. Oh, as much as raining can be beautiful, I hope it does not. We are still working. And she's trying to like quickly trace the shapes in. Uh, I will say that the book I'm holding open is that first edition. And even though she's not looking at it for the pose's sake, she's still reading to you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's just happening. There's like a low murmur that she's hoping you can still hear. She's continuing to tell the story. So Curse's pose, she, she's all aimed up, but her eyes are just like <laughs> looking <what>? down <laughs> at Prithi. <laughs> I'm reading for the squad. Yeah. Neil, I'm also like listening very intently as well, because I've never heard this story really either. Can I, while in pose, mm -hmm. we're outside Outdoor, naturally. Yeah. Um, I'd like to just see, is the fire still going in yeah. the distance? Because yes. rain's coming in and I'm getting a worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's find out. No. Um, I'd say the fire, as far as you can tell by the smoke over the tents, uh, the fire has is being quenched. It is being put out, but there's there's still a column of smoke. However, you don't hear the sounds of pandemonium, so it sounds like it's probably under control. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's uh. gonna be listening to the, <clears throat> the first edition, because it's a little different than what she's heard at Bedtime Story, since her mom is such a fan of the Bane's Break Festival. It's true, the book came out in the year 849, so it's had a lot of re-releases since that time. It's been uh, about 400 years plus since it was released. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, mostly the same. The structure of the story is the same. There's just a few small edits here and there for clarity or for brevity. Um, but yeah, wonderful. You're all having this little, little daytime story read to you as you pose and are carved. Um, this does seem around you, though, a, like more than just a bit of cloud cover. Uh, more even than an impending storm, actually. The winds begin to rise, starting first as a gentle autumn breeze, but scaling into what feels like, uh, in mere moments, into an incredible gale force. Brutal winds whip at you all. Entire tents are ripped from their pegs and oh. thrown into the forest. Food, goods, clothing, all whipped about in a great maelstrom around you. C, light as she is, is also taken by the wind, barely steadying herself with her wings as she's thrown screaming in a few dozen yards Whoa. to the south. Oh, all of you... Are we supposed to move? Make uh, an athletics or acrobatics save. I would like to. Um, I want to definitely grab back onto the back of Prithiv, just like put a hand down, oh, and then I'm, I think I'm next to Neela as well, so I'll put a hand on each of them, and I'll uh, use my uh, slippers of spider climb to like try and stick down to the ground. Nice. Thank you. Get those gravity boots. Um, athletics or what? Athletics or acrobatics. Okay. Any of the, the body skills. I did all right. Actually, for the first time ever. Oh no, I rolled very poorly, oh. though I'm very good at acrobatics. I'm so Sorry. good at acrobatics, and I rolled so bad. Okay, um, <laughs> do I get advantage because he's helping? Can I, can also, I hold on to her then? If... I'll say, so you have the boots of spider climb, right? They're kind of anchoring yeah, you yeah. down. I'd say roll with advantage. Good. And then we'll see how well too. your success affects the people that you're gripped onto here. Please roll better. Okay, uh, that's a 19. <gasps> I got 21. 
Okay. Oh my god, yeah. If you three are kind of in a chain, yeah, Prelude yeah. is fine. Thank you. Yeah. Because <laughs> these two did great. I did bad. 14. 14? <laughs> my first roll was Team. a two. I was hovering in midair. Oh, oh, I, and I rolled a nine. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, Lucas, go! Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a kite now. If I, if I notice him like starting to move away, tether, no. tether can I grab onto his robes? With my, because my hand is up, and if I notice him moving, I'm going to try and grab. <laughs> Let me tell you what has to happen right now. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. You can certainly make a grab for Luca. Yes. But that the power of him being swept away is a bit more than just you can keep down. Someone has to grab you too. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I'm how gonna, is Jive doing? I, well, I'm going to add that I okay. I've been on ships before, right? Oh. And storms have hit, and so we've had to collapse sails pretty quickly, yeah. like mm-hmm. handle the masts and everything, right? For sure. And so I think that similar physics are at play. So po- is it possible for Jive to like see this happen, like bounce off? the slab and try to collapse Lucas Wings. Oh! What a move! Just like, pa 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 Okay, so for that, I'll say, just for like the nimbleness of it, you can make one more roll, either acrobatics or sleight of hand, to see if you can just quickly tuck Luca. You need, okay. me, need me to throw your line? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a bad idea. I probably could. Do we see you doing this? I want to cast guidance. Just smack his foot. <laughs> Just the little tip of the tail. How's that? Uh, I got a 22. Is that good? Okay, okay, yes. Yeah. So, okay. Here's what's going to happen in this beautiful moment. Luca, <laughs> you're swept tight wise <laughs> into, the, into the winds. Astrid, you make a frenzied grab for his robes and then feel yourself lifted off the ground also. Not very oh, heavy. Mary Poppins style. <laughs> and then Jive, oh, right. you with your running leap off the slab, grab his wings and tuck them and all of you come crashing back Ow. to the ground. It's like one of those like standing <gasps> umbrellas when it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Thanks. Quite, quite a move. <laughs> Thanks. Uh-huh. Thank you. As the folding tent, the main tents, even the stage are torn from the earth and tossed aside like a bit of refuse, the various festival goers are fleeing in panic. They've already made headway south, away from the apparent direction of the winds, which you all seem to be at this swirling epicenter of, leaving the festival grounds deserted, save for one person. That ragged old elf with his piercing blue eyes stands firmly rooted not ten yards to the south of you, almost staring past you, lost in thought. He drops his walking stick to the ground and closes his eyes, taking a deep breath and seeming to focus himself. What do you do? If you choose to not all at elves all, know each other. <laughs> I'm gonna get uh, no, because I do not want to be on the ground. <laughs> That's why you get. Oh, okay. So I will say, uh. all of you will be severely restricted in movement speed as you are trying to like keep your composure on the ground. You can move perhaps five feet, maybe ten, in any direction if you use your full action, or do something from the position you currently are. Only if you want to. You can what? also obviously see what plays out. Wait, d- does it look like the like the wind is this person's fault? Or they're just like standing there? I'd say, even without a roll, which you could roll for sure. You know what, actually, yeah, throw me, throw me an insight or oh, a perception. Great. Yeah, sure, I'm just gonna <laughs> roll believe. a die. Let's go. 17. That's, did I roll? Okay, no, there it is. Uh, oh, perception <laughs> or an insight? Your choice. Oh, perception's much better. Uh, 17. Ah! Oh! No, no way. Call shot, call shot. No talk. fucking way. What? Can she get like a nat 20 for that then? When I call them, they're nat 20. <laughs> the Kaylee's Okay, I can't handle that. Okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> oh my god. That's very really cool. Get your spooky ass out of my show. <laughs> get your spooky ass. <laughs> I'm known for these moments. <laughs> okay, so. You, you with me everywhere. <laughs> you do not, in fact, even with a limited magical background, which is why I didn't have you roll Arcana, um, <laughs> you don't get the impression by just sizing him up that this is coming from him. Mm. He appears to be responding or like reacting to it. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm gonna try and like brace myself against the against the marble and like secure anybody else who's with me to like you know be how, safe. How many feet away is he? About ten yards. Ooh. Ten, okay. Oh, 10 yards. He so is, 30 however, feet. He is, however, gradually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a yard. Um, he is 
He is, however, slowly walking towards you, uh, gently closing that gap. Okay, uh, also just going to play into like sort of the maritime naval aspect of Jibe here. Uh, I have feeling agility, so I can double my speed. Ooh. Can I put that in play here? Yeah. So I'd say, assume that your default movement right now is five feet. Right. If you want to use your dashed 10, double that would be 20. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just going to close that gap a little bit to get closer to him. Sure. Uh, and just to like hold out my hand. Because this wind is very, yeah. we almost all got knocked out, right? If so you're, if you're if you're going out there, I I probably would actually like throw you a line so that oh, you're great. secured to the. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, 100% sure. just like fasten that to like my belt. And you've got to like scramble kind of on all fours too, like as you make your way out to just stay on the ground. As you do that, and you like throw out the line, and you literally held me down. Uh, I go ahead and cast magic since my hands on the ground anyway, and like three little runnels of ink uh, go and touch the three of your shadows, and I cast bless. Oh, <laughs> fun! I love yeah. It. Also, very flavorful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the ground begins to crack and fissure at your feet. And you can see, especially you who are closer to him, you can see the elf mouthing the words to something, his hands moving in hypnotically rhythmic patterns. He slowly steps toward you all, eventually closing the gap with you, Jive, if you'd like to try and like get a hand on yes. or help steady him. You reach out and I'm assuming grab his arm? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a very stable place to get someone's arm. <laughs> <laughs> Arm's a good way to get an arm. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, an arm. The pathway to the arm is the arm. The arm. <laughs> I watched Debris' eyes are just like, yeah, stick the landing, stick the landing. And they just wobbled. And I, was like, I got it. I got it. I got it. Sweetie, you're perfect. <laughs> it's one of those videos where someone goes on like the jump pad and gymnastics and goes like off. <laughs> they still did a flip. Yeah. They still did a flip. Uh, okay, so you grab, you grab his arm and he doesn't seem to immediately react, but you do feel it is seeming to steady him a bit as he is walking forward, and you can kind of move with him towards this epicenter. Um, as he steps toward you all, that is when you also notice. Um, that's when, as he closes the gap, it becomes much more clear to you. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm trying to picture this, this setting in my head here. So right now we have you holding his arm. Mm -hmm. We have Neela. You have a line on, on Jive. You're not physically there, right? Correct. I'm staying back with I'm still the, gripping the onto these two. With braced against line. the marble, okay. I would assume. And the rest of you two are still where you kind of fell. I got yeah. up. I you wanted to up. get You're up. in the same area, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. I just wanted to get ready. And then you are where essentially you were to begin with. 100%. Casting your spell. Great. Yep. When uh, the bless hits... I'm reminded, uh, Curse immediately is like, I can use magic here, uh, and I'm just gonna detect magic as well on what the hell is happening. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, so casting your detect <laughs> magic, um, you get the sensation that there are a number of schools at play here. Um, there appears to be conjuration um, there, uh, from the epicenter. <clears throat> there appears to be um, evocation as well and then abjuration that is beginning to come from this old elf. And also, areas of magic that you can't even quite identify. They feel like something a little bit beyond your purview, something that is not classically within the existing structure of um, leveled and classed spells, if that okay. makes sense. I have um, conjuration, evocation, abjuration, question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as he approaches, you all notice, as his hands move, his fingers seem to almost disappear and reappear, his hands sometimes uh, being in several places at once and sometimes nowhere at all, moving in reverse, moving forward, duplicating themselves, um, almost too fast for the eye to track. And then, just then, a mere feet to the north of you, there is an incredible blinding flash of light. Out of the light, you all see six silhouettes collapse onto the ground, unmoving and visibly bloodied and ruined, so much so that you can't even make out their faces clearly. Then, out of the light steps a larger figure, dressed in torn, burned, but nonetheless very regal vestments, with the lightly rounded ears of a half-elf, radiating power. What do you all do? 
I immediately get an Eldritch Blast in my hand. <laughs> it's it's a blue with a deep purple center. Nice. Which is wrapping around my hand. Awesome. I'm anchoring like three people right now. I can't do life. anything yeah. else. Yeah, I'm like, I actually don't think that I can do anything either. Both of my hands are <laughs> gripped onto people. Yeah. I'm going to shrug gently out of it because I'm, I'm in a pretty stable position and I do want to sink back a little bit because I'm holding a, a spell that I need to okay. protect to keep up. I'm hiding behind Astrid. Oh, <laughs> I have a giant shadow. You're a protector in the back. Yeah, my wings are completely out behind you and I'm just like, ah. Honestly, with your size, oh she's gosh. hiding in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> with, the big, with the big black wings out. Yeah. That's yeah. You look just... awesome right now. Yes. You look so, so cool. I have wings. Because like the, Not the back side, at all. The back side of my wings are like completely black, right? But the yeah. inside of my wings are like completely white. So it's almost like you're an angel, like standing. Ooh, Let's with an elder glass. With your cool. assistance, Jibe, the ragged elf has managed walking against the wind to reach all of you. And you're sort of, I'm assuming, helping to pull him along as you're working toward the epicenter there. Uh, are we, uh, have... he, he certainly is walking forward toward where you all started. In that, how close is he? How many feet? Or well, now, I mean, at this point, he's about <laughs> to close the distance to be within like five feet. Okay, in that case, I would like to add uh, the second that mm-hmm. this all happens mm-hmm. and that this tall figure with energy appears, Jibe's nowhere to be seen. Whoa. Whoa. Amazing. Awesome, okay. Wonderful. <clears throat> does, the, does the line go slack or is it still? I, uh, the, the gentleman's still holding it. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Uh, the ragged elf behind you has managed, walking against the wind to reach all of you, and you finally hear him chant the final word of his incantation in a great bellow that cuts through the rage of the wind and reverberates into your bones. Now, Jibe, what is it you're getting up to right now? I am getting in position. I don't know what's going on, but bodies just hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a few platforms I can crawl up onto. Yeah. And so I would like to just get somewhere behind uh, this figure and just be perched up in case things go south, which they probably will, okay. with two daggers in hand. Offer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say the only south. thing still in this area that hasn't been torn away or blown away is the marble slab right. itself. So you can certainly get like up and off of that to try and get around this figure who stepped out of the light. Yes. Um, roll me an acrobatics to try and finagle that. Okay. Five plus roll. That's gonna be nineteen. Let's go. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> A few things happen at once. You work your way around, feeling rather sneaky and accomplished, yep. um, as you dart around this figure in the light. And then you feel, as you begin to round that, a hand reaches down and grabs you by the throat and lifts you up off the ground. And you're looking into a face, backlit, so you can't make out all of its features clearly, uh, but still noticing in in silhouette those rounded ears and a tall, very, um, a tall, lean male half-elf with, even with all the damage he's apparently received, still very uh, carefully coiffed hair and a very sort of regal demeanor about him. And you feel him begin to close on your trachea. As everything else happening in the group here is taking place, is there something you'd like to immediately do? Yeah, Jive is scared shitless right now. (laughs) Uh, Not like a a sneaky little cat boy, not a fighter. Uh, So both daggers just like into the arm to let go, just like jam in. Okay. As, as much as possible. <laughs> you jam those daggers in and you feel them, you you put a lot of force behind that and you feel them stop just short of his skin as they encounter some sort of dark purple energy that seems to surround him and slowly pierce into them as you push and push. You slowly work your way through. When he when he gets grabs his heart, I want to let go of the Eldritch Blast and hit the figure. Can we see? We, we can see you. Well, I, I mean, I imagine your all eyes are on the figure standing in the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So certainly you could see a silhouette that looks cat-like. Cool. Um, getting <laughs> getting choked out here. <laughs> yeah, I want to let it go. If you would permit me, can I do it? Yeah. I'm going to grab Astrid by the waist. Yeah. And I'm going to take my wings and I'm going to get into the air while holding her. 
So a lot of things happen at once. <laughs> <laughs> As she's casting Eldritch Blast, a lot of things happen at once. <laughs> and so you're working on digging those daggers in. You're holding on for dear life. You're focusing on your spell effect. You're releasing an Eldritch Blast. You're about to try and take off. And the final words as this is all happening, of uh, the elf's spell bellow out into the, uh, into the field around you. And you feel the elf's magic take hold of your bodies as you begin to release, as you begin to fly, as you begin to grip. You feel your bodies drawing away. The ragged elf is close enough now to be able to speak to you in a shout and as you feel yourselves slipping into unawareness, even drifting physically out of this place, you hear his words, find me, save High Point. And then, nothing. Darkness, unfeeling, yet cold. Like a stream running over your body in reverse, but still chilling you to the bone. And that, is a wonderful place for us to take a little break. Oh! No, please no. no. We'll be back yes. in just a few minutes, Ooh. so stay tuned, don't go anywhere, and uh, see what happens next. Let's go. Let's oh go. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this first amazing inaugural episode of our campaign, The Borough Saga Bane's Break, titled A Difference. We're coming back in now as our players were just whirled away to somewhere, and in fact, you all slowly, groggily begin to rouse. You find yourselves in a heap on a road. And while it was just a moment ago, morning, looking up at the sky, you realize it is now the middle of the night and rain is splashing your face. And you're aware by the buildings just yonder, not even 20, 30 feet away, that you're right outside of a city of some kind. Also, it is more pleasantly warm than before, where you were very aware of that bracing autumn chill just prior. However, you have all taken quite a rough trip and each receive three points of damage. Oh! Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, our poor squishy squishy. I mean, it's a little less fun at level two. I'm down. <laughs> I mean, you'll live. I'm perma dead from that. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. You had one HP. You villager. All right. Oh, no. I'm an NPC. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Okay, that's not all though, because. Um, Estrid, you realize that someone is prodding you with a wooden staff, like a little bit on your head, your shoulder, and Ow. you also realize you're being spoken to. Ow, what? Ow. Ow. It's a voice that sounds vaguely familiar, but kind of hard to place. Hello, uh, are you not all right? Ow. No, um, yes. I, I want to look around and see if everybody's awake yet. You and are also all move the staff from my face. Please stop. Uh, what are you all doing out here in the middle of the night? The pub's been closed for hours. How drunk did I get? What time is it? I couldn't be any, it couldn't be before three in the morning. That's a long time. Did I get drunk? What happened? Uh, all right, I, I, if you all would get up, let's get you out of the, the wet and the cold. Well, yeah. Quite no, nice, actually, but it's, it's it's very wet there and dark. A, Come with me, please. Prithu is very accustomed to waking right. up oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like this, and that's so sad to Second say Second time out loud. today. Second time <laughs> today. Um, can I like wake up and do my normal check of like uh, looking at like terrain, trying to figure out roughly? She tries to like ground herself on where she is uh, immediately. Yeah. Upon um, roll me perception with advantage. You do see quite well um, at night. Oop, that first one's bad. Uh, 17. Okay. 
Uh, yes. I mean, looking around you, you see a terrain that is not immediately familiar. <clears throat> it could be several parts of the world. Uh, you see uh, what appears to be just the, the, the glimpse, the hint of a mountain range to your south, um, a lightly forested area around you, and a city to your north. You would guess you might be somewhere in Imperia still by the okay. climate and topography, but you couldn't for, say, uh, for sure say where. Okay. Where, where are we? Oh my god, you all did have quite a bit tonight, okay. didn't you? <laughs> Somebody uh, told me I drank last night. Is my detect magic still up? It's been, it's a 10 minute spell. Uh, then yeah, you would still have it. <clears throat> uh, the hell? <laughs> nothing, nothing around you reads magical. Except for any like obviously magical Party bits numbers, and bobs yeah. you have on you. Um, nothing out of the ordinary reads magical for you. Oh, are you being serious? I, uh, yes. Oh, um. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you, you're out of the, the city of High Point. Um, I assume this is where you were just drinking a moment ago. <laughs> Outside the, uh -huh. the city of High Point. That, yes. That, That's that. High Point? You don't smell like booze. Um, I definitely do. You smell like booze. <laughs> 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 yes, that's High Point. I, anyway, please, if you would just, let's get you out of the night. My house is just on the corner there. I can make you a cup of tea and warm you up by the hearth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Does, does this guy seem like he's got any ulterior motives or anything like that? Roll insight. Okay. <laughs> can I, I assist you? you? Yeah. Well, do you need it? Mm. Roll again oh, anyway. Like a... hmm? yeah. Are you assisting I'm me? assisting you, yeah. Oh, advantage? Is that a long rest? Yeah. God, no. <laughs> are you kidding me? We are in a different city. No way. <laughs> is this a tea? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I watch it happen. I look right yeah. at you and like, it looks like a bird. Burn him. Yeah. Yeah. Get burn your him. spooky ass out my show. <laughs> you're not a bird, you're a bat. <laughs> Too spooky. I'm sorry. I'm not a bitch, I'm your wife. Uh, wow, okay. Um, you get inspiration for that. That's incredible! Whoa. You've now called two rolls. I, I'm mine. not guessing anymore. Of yeah. mine, I know. and they were I just, double digits. I just, I Eat felt up. it. I wanted to almost like, I feel feels like, like a 15. I feel the need to appease you as like the god of dice. Yes. Like, yeah. You're this I'm, fey presence among us. I'm never rolling that. dice without Aaron ever again. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Yes. Jesus. Um, wow, where the hell was I? Uh, yeah. High point? Uh, check him out. Yeah, the inside, inside check. Thank you, yes. He offered to you. <clears throat> uh, what was your roll, 15? 15. Oh yeah, Aaron told us. <laughs> um, uh, yes, with that, he just seems like a confused guy who found a pile of people sitting in a puddle in the middle of the night. Well, that's nice of him. I'm gonna just walk by. All right. Uh, yes, uh, I look, I'll get a fire going. We'll just sort this all out. Uh, and he leads you through the quiet streets of the city. Um, oil lamps and some very scant magical illumination cast a dim glow on the slick stone roads and alleyways. Shingles hanging outside of businesses uh, boarded up for the night lightly sway in the breeze. Uh, ultimately, the man leads you around a corner uh, and up to a quaint two-story townhouse squashed between a couple of commercial buildings. He opens the door, and you all feel the warmth and light from inside spill over you, and he holds the door open for you. Uh, this is my place. What was your name? You're so kind. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, my name is Kelsis. Kelsis. It's a pleasure to meet you. Prithiv. Prithiv. I didn't get your name, I'm so sorry. Oh, mm, all right. Uh, curse. Curse. Don't tell. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think, don't, I don't think tell. it would be okay, actually. Yes, it's a family name. Ah, oh. uh, and where's that from? The, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> the, um, south. Lovely. Huh? Of. And, oh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> the last place we were. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great, I'm gonna let you sober up inside. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, Neela. Neela, yeah. that's right, thank you. Uh, I'm Jive. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Jive is very confused. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're all there. Big time. I'm Astrid. Uh, Samir. 
That's Astrid. I'm Luca. Ah, oh, it's a, lovely to meet you all. Please, um, we're still in the rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, yes. Join me. I have a question. I've traveled a good bit, so looking as we're kind of walking up to his house, sure. does any of this look familiar? The city itself? Mm-hmm. I'd say no. You'd recognize the architecture as being the type of thing you've seen before in the Republic and parts of Imperia and locations where the Republic has a strong influence, but you have never been to this city. Got it. <clears throat> uh, you enter into a quaint living room, a fire already roaring in the hearth. A few comfortable looking chairs surround a small wooden table where a teacup already sits empty next to a book with a scrap of paper holding a spot about halfway through. Stairs lead up from the living room to the floor above and an open entryway leads to further rooms over to your left. The man peeks about the room and calls out, "Uh, Lila, darling, could you get a kettle on? Uh, We have guests. There's a bit of shuffling and an elven woman steps out into the living room. She has black hair and olive toned skin and is dressed very casually, not like in nighties, but comfortable. Um, And she says, oh, so we do. Gods, look at you all soaked to the skin. Uh, yes, I'll get some tea. You, you can hang the wet clothes there by the fire if you'd like. Uh, this is my wife, Lila. Uh, Lila, these are some new friends that uh, crashed out in a heap on the road. Don't put it that way. <gasps> Thanks for that. Uh, Accurate, but you don't have to say it. That's, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what else to make of it, that's truly. That's fair. Honestly, neither do we. <laughs> so. Uh, Kerr starts like taking kind of like layers of her wraps off that mm-hmm. she wears and hanging them by the fire. And you can see the like massive scars that are covered across her back, like big long stripes um, across her back as she's hanging everything to dry. And she's like nearly completely undressed. Cool. <laughs> I'm gonna take my cloak off and uh, cast present dissertation on it to dry it and put it around Kerr. <sighs> that's very, that's very good. That's it's very secret. good. I don't want that back. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also have a daughter um, as well, Ivia. Uh, she's upstairs sleeping. Um, but probably best we keep it that way. So I'll be using a, a, a lower tone of voice if you don't yeah. mind. <clears throat> you want to wake the baby for sure. Uh, yes. Uh, the man sits down in the chair that's clearly his usual spot mm. and looks you all over. And it's only now, uh, in the light of the fire and the um, the glow of the room, that you can really take in his face and his bright blue, uh-uh. electric blue eyes. Yes. Right. Uh, well, we'll get you all sorted. Um, now, please, uh, if you don't mind, state my curiosity. Why were you all out there? You're not clearly that drunk, aside from... <laughs> I'm always like this. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to look at me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It does kind of feel like you're the only, you're the one who knows best what's going on. I don't know why you just give off that like vibe. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Jibe does glance at you because he got the closest, I think, to the gentleman. Yeah. And so got like a very good view of the man's face and would recognize, I think, those blue electric eyes. Yeah. Yes. So I'd say. Anyone here could have gotten a glance at a distance as he approached you, especially as he closed in for that that final thing he said to you all. Yeah. But you having directly met him and spoke to him, and you having closed in, spent the most time close to him. Hey, just a quick check. What's that book on the table? Is it a first edition? (laughs) (laughs) It actually is not. Okay. Um, He appears to be reading a book uh, about something having to do with uh, sea currents and the... Evolving uh, mercantile channels used uh, over the over the centuries. I don't know why I'm looking interested. Mercantile. I, can't read. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what an interesting tone. Uh, oh, um, yes, I used to travel quite a bit, so I still like to read up on you know the advances in sailing and 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 such. What's um, uh, uh, out of curiosity? Um, what uh, is the newest? Uh, advancement in sailing that you could share with us? Well, I'd have to say. Um, And he picks up the book and flips to the end. Um, Well, they just, I I don't, I'm so sorry, I forget forget the name of it for the life of me, but they'd just come up with this new uh, contraption that allows you to sort of 
it allows the steerer to multiply the force applied to the wheel to turn the boat faster. Initially, it was just a simple system of pulleys and ropes, and it would be a lot of turning, but you, with this new gear system they developed, it, um, it's much more efficient now. I've just, I just started reading about it. And you're trying to determine when that was from? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, is, that, is this a technology I'm aware of? I'd say I wouldn't. I mm, Well, you're on boats. Yeah. yeah. That's okay, not going to roll. Say, I feel like that also, sounds familiar to me at, at yeah, as well. For neither of you, that would even, wouldn't even be a roll. Now, how well studied you are on the history of engineering of ships over time... I don't know what it is. I just probably know it. It sounds familiar. I also, I don't know. If I, I ever would cared. say, at the very least, you can determine that that is a standard feature of most ships these days, and has been that way for a very long time. Like you've never known a ship that didn't have that. No one's even talked about ships that don't have that. Could you tell us what um, the exact year is right now? Oh, I guess we're just gonna ask. Good. <laughs> ah, saves time. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to you all tonight? <laughs> we well, answer. Hang on, answer our question yeah. first. Answer our question <laughs> first. Because then I, I, I've got a different a answer depending on what you're question than ours. Yes. Uh, if you must know, the year's eight forty. <laughs> uh, what? PT. Okay. That's a surprise to you. I mean, not to me personally. I'm already quite old, but I'm sure uh, this is a shock for some of the shorter lived here. What? What? It's eight hundred years ago. Eight four zero. Uh huh. Yeah. It's what? 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 Huh? What? Huh? Uh, what? My, it's oh. been four hours. Oh yeah. Ah <coughs> oh, yep. tea. Um and <laughs> Lila indeed brings out uh, a cup and kettle and and pours a few cups here and there as you all sit. Oh thank you so much. When was that fancy book written? Hmm? When was the book written? Well, Which book? Yeah, when was the first edition? Oh, wait, that one? Yeah. His book or my book? No, the one that you've got. Oh, uh, when was the first edition? 849. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Nine years ahead. This is good. This is good. <laughs> and you all recall, of course, that the festival you were just attending yeah. was in the year 1277. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Naturally. Naturally. It's been right, so, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I feel like I still haven't got a clear idea here. Um, you mean what? Well. How did you find yourselves out there? There is a curfew in effect. I don't know why you would have gone out that late. Well, uh, do we want to just tell him? So I lit oh. the circus on fire, and oh. then um, oh. while they were scrambling, I ran, and then I ran into all of um, them mm -hmm. at yes. a festival. <laughs> and um, Pradev read us a book. And, and I pull out the book, oh. but I open it to his handwriting <gasps> and offer it. You want to open first. it to the note that was included yes. with the book. And he takes it. Just cards on the table. We're just waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Look, right. he told us to find him. He and looks at the note and flips it over. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Where did you get this? Through you. I don't, I'm afraid, I don't, I don't. I'm not following yes. I see what we're saying here. I don't think any of us really, Wait. except maybe two of us seem to grasp it a little bit more, but. You should be fine. You're very good at magic. Abjuration, no doubt. I've, I've studied, it's been a little while. Can you envision a world in which time is as malleable as the forces of nature. Are you, just to be clear, you were saying you are from a different time. Yes. And I gave you this. Yes. You handed me a book that, if you're accurate for the year, won't be written and released for nine more years. Correct. I forgot to mention when the light the, the, lit the circus on fire, it was 1277. That was the important part of that story. No, it's okay. It was all very important. He, you, look, you look good for your age in 1277, just so you know if you like that helps. I don't know. Elf don't shelf. It's cold. <laughs> 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 
Get out. Of, get out of I'll, Taiho. I'll go, I'll go. This holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a rattling sip of his tea and puts it down. I, um, he's just, he's quiet for a moment with a furrowed brow, and then you hear a rap on the door. Yeah, and curse hides. Uh, I think she might have the right idea this time. Yeah. <laughs> I th- I I'm gonna go behind the couch with Curse. Just hide behind one of the furnitures. I, I have no idea how we're gonna hide here, though. Just Everyone just... pretend to be a drape. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Everyone, just try to behave normally, please. Oh gods. Um, I'll I'll handle this. And he walks over, and opens the door. It's hard to see the person on the other side, um, but you catch a glimpse of a maroon coat. There's hushed conversation, and you hear Kelsis say, just faintly, it's three in the morning, Cal, they just came into town a bit late is all. And the other fellow says something, and Kelsis replies, fine, f- yes, let's just please just keep it brief. The fellow shakes the water off of himself and steps inside. As best you can tell, it's a human man, about 5'11 in height, wearing a long, shin le- uh, shin-length maroon leather coat with a hood, a cowl that covers his mouth, and a pair of small maroon goggles over his eyes. He has understated epaulets on each shoulder, a single golden stripe that goes to about mid-arm. He pulls down the hood and cowl, revealing sandy brown hair. He looks all of you over. Now, right now, are there people physically attempting to hide? Oh my god. All of you roll stealth for me. Uh, you have an advantage. Oh, no, it's the same third number. You! Um, I have 16. I rolled in that 16. 20. Oh, mercy. <laughs> pretending to be drained. For the pretending biggest to be drained. fucking bird. <laughs> pretending to be drained. <laughs> Ashton, how are you? 16. Okay. 16, 16, yeah, 20. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't have predicted that one. Don't smirch R and Jesus. No, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> he really is R and Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so, wow, you are you are amongst the drapery. You are in there. And you know what? You actually realize as you sort of snuggle into the drapes, they already had kind of a feathered pattern to them. <laughs> like a black feathered pattern. So you're like, oh, oh you disappear into her. Yes. It's like the, the Homer the Hedge. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Shouldn't that be deeply concerning to you? Yeah, I said pattern. Very oh, no. <laughs> it smells just like me. Oh, oh. no. Oh boy. Um, I'm learning things about Kelsis and not sure. <laughs> Elves are deeply proud. Feather pattern. <laughs> um, the fellow walks into the room, takes off the hood and cowl, and looks at those of you who are presently visible, which is you three. <clears throat> I apologize for the intrusion. It's entirely possible you didn't know, but there is currently a curfew in effect in the city by order of Regent Oris Kadir Southmarch. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, you were all out after dark, and I know the name and face of every single person in this city, but I have never seen you all before. May I ask where you're coming from? Oh, how hot is he? I'm sorry, the voice <laughs> got <laughs> uh, Yeah, so sorry about that. Uh, the weather, you know, delayed travel. We just uh, we got bogged down and couldn't uh, couldn't make it in time for curfew. Just yeah. passing Apologies. through. Yeah. yeah. Where are you coming up from? Do I know? Sorry. Uh, I could give you geographical details you'd know if you'd like. Yeah. I don't, would I know uh, geographical I mean, de- details that are because are we close enough to a coast? At the very least, you had come up from the capital city of Delta's meet to get to High Point for the festival. So I mean, I, that so much I, certainly you'd know. I, I could at, le- at the very least say that you know, we're coming from Delta's meet, yeah. Yeah, yeah Delta's meet. Travis Beat. It's a long trip. Indeed. And what brings you all the way from the capital of the Republic to this uh, sleepy little city in Imperia? Question, did the cult of Yamiel exist at this time? You, so from historical, yeah, accounts you would have dug into, yes, you'd be aware there would have been a presence here. Uh, not necessarily in this city for sure, but you are aware of its existence having been true at this time. Okay. Uh, I represent a learned uh, group and uh, our presence was asked for by someone probably a little bit above the pay grade. Ooh. Ooh. Well, uh, roll me up, uh, 
persuasion on that, or intimidation, whatever your flavor is. Ooh, does it matter? It's gonna be bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ten. Hmm. You're saying somebody, um, somebody with us? Yes, of course. It's funny. Um, I am the captain of the callers in this town. Yes. I report directly to the lieutenants, and I'm not aware of them enlisting any outside contractors. Look, I'm not here uh, attempting to do any wet work. That's your job. But unless you have a wealth of knowledge at your disposal at any given time, perhaps we're both useful to South March in this moment. Very lucky he rolled a four. Okay. Stop talking shit. Stop talking shit. <laughs> Don't, Can't do stop. it. Stop. Don't stop. <laughs> and I assume you're with them. Every, yes. Every learned person needs uh, Are someone. Are you doing his voice? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Every, every nerd needs a god, you know what I mean? <laughs> Going to need you to stop. It's been weeks of that. You have to stop calling right, me that yeah. too much. They're right. always like this. <laughs> I can hear you. <sighs> and I open my book petulantly to sell it. <clears throat> uh, Carlisle, they just had a few too many and are getting their bearings. I'll, I'll take responsibility for them. And Cal holds up a hand. You're all welcome to sleep it off. But I would suggest that you clear out of here by morning. Vigilance That's... around these parts is heightened as of late. Why is that? It's not my job to ask questions. I'm just told there have been some seditious incursions into Reeve as of late, and we are all supposed to be on high alert, and curfews are meant to be strictly enforced. Now, Kelsis and I go back a little ways, so I can cut you a break, but I will not do it again. He dons his hood and cowl once more, nods to Kelsis and steps outside. Lila comes back in with a plate of biscuits, little mm -hmm. sugar cookies with a single flower petal baked into the center of each one. Oh. <laughs> Cal's, Cal's usually such a nice man, at least as callers go. I wonder what's got him on edge lately. Couldn't have been me. I'm so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the weather. Yeah. 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 Ugh. You know. It's uh, late. I'm just going to roll out from under the couch. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Pop up. Where did... Did Where's... we lose Luca? I'm going to look around. Luca? Did I do a good job? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Can you do that all the time? Is it all the time? Depending on my dice roll. <laughs> On your what? Yeah, I hear it. What the? Yes! Immediate nose irritation. Oh my head! It doesn't sound like anything to me. These are paws! <laughs> well, I just saw it looked really similar, don't you think? Yeah. What is th th that? You do look a lot like those curtains. Mm. Where did you get that? Ooh. The curtains? Yeah. Goodness, I couldn't say. They came with the house. <laughs> I'm gonna go draw over there. I'm gonna go to the fire and Wait, you know they're not real feathers, right? And he goes over and ruffles it, and you see it's like the cutout, the shapes of feathers in like black fabric. Oh. I can't do it, but he does like a relief squeak at like the highest <laughs> pitch. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> Bird splain to an Aarakocra? That's yeah. insane. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, now that we've warmed up, I'll take off Astrid's cloak mm. and offer it back Thank to you. Her. I'm gonna put it back on. Look, if if what you're saying is true, my God, it, it's absurd. Mm. It's objectively absurd, mm -hmm. isn't it? What you're claiming. I think it's well, your fault, though. Oh, no, hold on. Wait, wait, why are you? <laughs> what happened to make you here? Why are you now? Then mm. there is a. Or light of some sort and bodies and a do figure. I mean, I will say that we did technically come from the ruins of High Point. Yeah. Ooh. So that might have happened. That might be relevant. I don't know. That's like in like mid chapter. Oh, you don't want to read that. And I'm going to say, <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's, snap it. He's no. been thumbing through it for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. We don't was, show the future to past people. 
No. Feels there bad. There was a, a yeah, big storm, and then um, uh, uh, this large uh, light shined through, and somebody came through the light and and grabbed onto Jive, and and the winds were sweeping us all up, and we just. I, I guess we got pulled through it. Oh, yeah, you okay? You got a bit strangled, didn't you? Uh, it's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, you still feel the fingers on your trachea, that the marks are still throbbing. The uh, more important thing is I couldn't, um, I couldn't stab them. Oh. I couldn't, uh, there was some sort of uh, magic. Like, like, what kind of magic? What does this person look like, even? I couldn't tell the light was... I actually don't know. Hmm. He was a half-elf. His ears were kind of like mine. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and hair was, um, it was like perfect. The best you could describe or remember is that <laughs> the, 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 stature, <laughs> the stature, the clothing, the yeah. half-elf ears, and that like very cleanly coiffed black hair. And then you said something, and you said, uh, come find us. And um, here we are. I'm sorry, did you say the ruins of High Point? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Stop <laughs> telling past people the future. He was worried that what happened to Megan, I think that that's relevant. What happens to High Point? Uh. It. It's kind of a low point in history. There we go. Oris is overthrown. Oh! Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, okay. Well... Whoa. He, he, he's gonna have to know. Why? Because he said we needed to find him. So this is important. Maybe this moment has to happen. Or maybe it has happened. I don't understand time. Mm-hmm. I never really did, and this is making it much worse. I, I mean, if, we, if we've handed in the book of the entire future, I feel like it's kind of cards so what exactly did he, he say to us to again? End. What did he say to us again in, b- Find before me we left? High point. You recall? Oh, say save but, something? Yeah, sorry. Find me, save high point. Save high point. All right. Oh. So w- there's not. Then there's not supposed to be ruins, <laughs> right? I would surely hope not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. <clears throat> uh. Yes, um, we need to get you off the continent. Mm-hmm. Um, Oris is going to be looking everywhere for you. Uh, okay, um... Why, Why is we? Oris going to be looking for us? I am concerned. The man you described having seen, that is very similar to the regal dress of a South March noble. There have long been rumors that, and I don't know how, Oris might be capable of some form of magical talent. If there's any chance he is aware that this has taken place, he is going to be hunting for you. He's going to be looking for you to ensure whatever you are trying to do does not come to pass. Any chance Oris has black hair that's pretty meticulously styled? So say the portraits. <laughs> Hey, okay. royalty, how fancy. Oh, yes. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the roads south to Delta's Meet are not going to be safe. We're not leaving. Right now. And you know that. I think we're going. We can't go south. What? Why yeah. not? We can't. Uh, in, in, cover your ears. Um, in the Legends Do of Fame's break, we head Did south. You fold your ears? Wait, who? We? Uh, I mean... So I'm getting this theory. There is six of us, and six people came out. Oh yeah, they were like dead. Yeah, they were dead. Um, in the book. Oh, this is hurting my brain. I'm doing great. In the book, the Bane Breakers go south to South March. They are then put in jail for six months. And unspeakable things happen. If, if time is stuff and happens and we're re, uh, something, I don't want to go south. I do not want to go south, if that is even a remote possibility. Now we're walking directly into his grasp if we take the road south right now. 
would never advise that. It's swarming with callers. North sounds good. North and North now, North. as as much as as friendly as polite as cow might be to us, to the citizens of High Point, he now knows you're here. Uh-huh. And there are three of us are here. He knows three, three of you are here. And if he's looking for six. All I know is this, everything he sees gets sent up to the lieutenants and then gets sent up to Oris. If Oris happens to be on the hunt or seeking you out, then the information is likely already on the way. So we go north? What is the nearest? North is ocean. Great, yeah, we ocean go. good. Ship, please. Mm. <laughs> is there a port? I, I don't know. Yeah, there's got to be a port, right? If we're, if we're coming from High Point, there's a port. Um, I have a map. I, I know where ports are. It's, I'm a pirate. It's fine. Hold on. Um, okay. Then, then what? Because we're not supposed to be here, and we don't have anywhere to go here. Isn't it remarkable how much like the base breakers we all happen to look? I'm uncomfortable with that what? even concept. Oh, right, because we, we, were, we were doing the whole, we the were, whole statue thing with it's for a reason. I don't know much about this whole story. I'm going to need somebody to catch me. We'll read the book on the way to a port. Hey. Uh, Jive is flipping a coin mm-hmm. while going over this because um, Jive's a gambler. And I believe, this is a lot of the game, <laughs> I believe that means when um, he's considering the odds, he, gets, he can get a little tip in one direction or the other. So right now, I like now, that mechanic. Yeah, love this. Right now we're between going south, which sounds like terrible odds, or yeah. going to a port, which is kind of a gamble in itself. Yeah. What is Jibe's gut telling him? His little kitty gut. Got a D2 Kaka. Right there. <laughs> it makes fun. Cool. <clears throat> You're aware of a few things, Neela, though you might not be as experienced in the history of this area, um, you'd you'd surmise that High Point possibly has a port, albeit a very, very small one, just used for commercial fishing. Uh, Jibe, your gut feeling is telling you there might be a better opportunity inland somewhere. Not going south, but proceeding somewhere further into Tariq, somewhere that you can lose the trail a bit, so to speak. If we go south, we can very easily just have the same thing happen. If we take to the seas, oh, we can get picked off. But we can get lost. And form a better plan. Find some place with a higher population and we can get I will say, if we charter a boat from High Point, it's not going to be more than a small fishing boat that would get us no further than Crag. And even then, they keep the callers, keep extensive records on who comes and goes. I do have a contact in Cornucopia who may be able to smuggle us abroad, but getting there is going to be a bit of a challenge as the callers are always watching the roads. How many are usually on guard? Like, what are the forces look like? It's patrols. It's, it's all up and down the, the roads. Every major thoroughfare between every capital and major city, you typically have roving patrols of callers, especially now. Oh, they, how many in a patrol? Anywhere from eight to ten in a given patrol. Yeah. A six of them. What? And uh, yeah, four of us, maybe. <clears throat> Kills us. Are you comfortable sending your family? Somewhere safe for the next ever. <laughs> I, I hope it doesn't come to that, but yes, there are places that they could go. I will do that as quickly as possible. I would highly recommend if you don't mind sending them to Traverse Peak, I know where they could be safe. Uh, Lila has also been um, standing by and listening to the conversation, <clears throat> and she puts a hand on Kelsis and says, um, we could arrange that. I, I, I believe we could 
If they're not looking for us uh, and we leave promptly, I could get myself and Evie out and um, we could make that trip happen. Do you know who we could go to? I do. And I want to pull out uh, the like broken, the shattered in half wax seal Mm -hmm. with the note and I open it up and I don't read the note. But I'm going to write uh, just a general, uh, like my name, uh, just uh, an introduction letter to them, and then I cast mending to reseal the seal. Mm, okay. This is important, and they know what to do with it. Look for a friend of Yamiel, and I hand it off. Thank you. Um, and Cal, and she, uh, not Cal, Cal says. He's gone. Uh, he puts a hand on his shoulder. Um, she says, honey, there is Elisamai in Desna. And you see Kels is kind of like pale a little bit. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. I, I, oof, I don't know about that. Um, ah, besides, I don't know if she'd want to help me after. Wait, I want to hear. That sounds like a story. Uh, no, there's. There's a, a dragonborn um, town in the hills not too far from here. Um, Elisa Mai is a, an engineer, a very talented engineer there, and I, I blew up one of her inventions, and I was asked to test ride it, <laughs> by the way. It was not entirely my fault, but it apparently took several years to build and I thought she might still be a bit cross with me, um, so I haven't been back there in a little while, although I would get us to Cornucopia very, very quickly. Um, God, I don't know about that, though. We'll protect you. I don't want to kill her, either. I don't, like, we're not fighting these people. Well, we can come to some agreement, I think. Yeah. All right. Okay, I... We can try, but I, uh, yes, I'm gonna have to go with you. Um, I have to ensure that you get off the continent safely. I, I, I will, okay, um. Sorry to drag you into this bud, but uh, technically you dragged you Yes, apparently. I don't really feel that bad anymore. Never mind. Hold up the note. Rescinded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this hurts my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Since I get there, might I throw this idea out? Um, in my travels, uh, young uh, people talk a lot um, are very annoying. <laughs> and <laughs> most young people are. Honestly, uh, Thank you. Luca and Curse, uh, what if you drove a wagon that we hid in the back of, and if we ran into anybody, just um, mm-hmm. talk to <laughs> yourselves? If I may, Luca has not been listening. <laughs> <laughs> but you look over to me when he mentions both of us, and you see that he's just sketching in his notebook, and you actually see your face on my notebook. What's going on? Wow. Uh, do you like the plan? Yeah, oh, sounds good. No, the, uh, the plan's very questionable. We have we have not done a good job of that so far. Of uh, the... talking to anybody. Oh, you're both so good. You're very good. This sounds like bait or we bait. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, n- I no, that. no, that's, no, 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 that's... <laughs> sound a little bit black. You are well, a distraction, not bait. A distraction I can do. Oh, okay. okay. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Oh, great. <laughs> Does that mean I have to distract too? Yes. Do either of you actually know how to steer a carriage? Absolutely not. I don't uh, think so. I can also assist. Let's go stay with us in front of a carriage. That no, sounds nice. Okay. Yes, we won't let anything bad happen to you. That won't happen to the rest of us. Like, we won't do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we'll just be right that way, yeah. <laughs> oh. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, do we have a carriage that we can use? Uh, there is an option um, there. Right, okay, um, we have to talk to Ogden here in town for horses and equipment. He does owe me a favor. Um, 
we're going to want to leave as soon as possible before we raise any more suspicion. Mm-hmm. Um, let me, I'll get my things. And Kelsis stands up and gently creeps upstairs to begin packing. How are we going to get out past the curfew? They're watching. Mm-hmm. But Cal, Cal said he was giving us a pause, right? So he's like, we've he got like a little bit. by morning, so right. I guess. Yeah. Technically we're doing what he said. It's almost mm-hmm. morning anyways. I think I think we we've bought like a little bit of time in anyway, right. just a little bit. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll be watching where we go. But if we leave at first light, and then yeah. we'll be okay, right? Perfect. I mean, I think leave immediately if we can. If we if we can contact your Ogden. <laughs> he's upstairs. He's upstairs. Uh, Who great. are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's no, a pain. Maybe we're talking alias? to your pint again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a, yes. that's Where okay. did you get wine from? <laughs> it's a fresh glass. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> what? It's just fine for me. Lila, Lila <laughs> ch- checks the teacup. <laughs> I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I just uh, like to go over to. It was Lila, right? Lila, yeah. I'm very sorry that us being here um, disrupted your family. Kelsis told me that when we first met. Um, he, I mean, what am I saying this? Um, that he had a past that might find him one day. Um, didn't think this would be it. Uh, a future. But we were always anticipating the possibility of minor upheaval, so we do have a plan in place. And Ivia will not understand, but, uh, I'll do my best to explain it to her, and hopefully, hopefully the heat dies down before too long. Thank you. I can only trust that what you're doing is awfully important. I think it might be. Yeah. You hear a dull thudding, and Keltus comes back down the stairs in a black traveling cloak, leather knapsack, and a staff. He pulls a small jar of ointment out of one of his pockets and dips his thumb into it, looking at all of you. May I? What? 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 Second. Sorry, it's... um, What and also. (laughs) (laughs) It's... Mercy alive. Um, Oh, sorry, it's, um, it's for the rain. Keep the rain off you. Oh. Uh. Uh. I step up and do it first. <laughs> <laughs> and he just puts like a dot on your head. And even now, like the existing moisture still on you from the rain, you feel it begin to kind of slough off a bit. It's pleasant. I can come up. I want to know about this. This sounds amazing. <laughs> yes, no, I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Here. Don't. Uh. Do you, have to, do you have to make the sound? <laughs> Sorry, I get very into it. Respect. <laughs> he was just saying that. <laughs> Verbal components are wild. It's better than just Simba. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when I was writing this episode, it crossed my mind. <laughs> but I know this is not failed safe. Um, I do want to slide that? over to Lila. Uh, just in, uh, kind of under my breath. Please just avoid the northern, com- like, avoid the Northlands of the Western Continent. How is it? Diseased. Or it will be. Time is different for us. And I have had a friend lose so much to it. So please just head south. Very well, yes, we can avoid. We don't have to pull to port in, in Polyria. We can um, charter a boat, um, I suppose, from south of Gold Plains to the Republic, just directly. Perfect, thank you. Um, okay. Yes, no, we can manage that. Uh, and Kelsis walks over to Lila, gives her a, a kiss and a hug, um, and says, uh, <clears throat> I already told Evie, uh, but I think she was half asleep. You'll explain when, when you can, yes? And she says, of course, be safe, love. We'll see you very soon. And Kelsis, as he starts toward the exit, pauses at the door for a moment. Right. Patrols will be limited this time of night, 
and we're just going across the way to Ogden's stables. It's about a block. It's a very short distance, but nonetheless, we should try and keep this somewhat on the down low. He swings open the door and steps out into the rainy, dark night. What do you all do? I remember to gather my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good call. Which are now a little bit toastier, a little bit drier. Okay. Um, I guess I just try and like wrap around my axe too, so it's not like shining anywhere or like clanking, and do my best to. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, you have this much time to get dressed. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, just muffling all of my like metal pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, I check all my weapons on me, and uh, I'm ready to go. Great. I open my book uh, to a page written entirely in Thieves' Cant, which I cannot read. Uh, <laughs> and I put my hand on it, and I'm going to channel divinity uh, knowledge. Uh, I am going to give myself proficiency in stealth. <gasps> Damn! That's so That's cool. awesome. That's amazing. Nothing I can do is cooler than that. Uh, <laughs> she's so cool. Yes. No. <laughs> uh, so I'm, s- I'm still at the, at the fire, and uh, Lucas still at the fire, and he's he's uh, sketching in his notebook, and he finally goes, "Done!" And he rips out a page, and he walks over the curse. So I know that you um, um, never really get past the first page, and I've been thinking about making this thing called um, uh, picture words. So what I did was. Uh, uh, here and he hands you a page that says curses c- table of contents chapter one and there's like this vertical parallax image that starts from the day that we met where we were scared going all the way down to um all of us in this room together and just hands it over to you i just thought like maybe you can't read a full book so maybe that's enough that's the first chapter i'll keep going okay if, if you like it and Chris just wraps her arms around Luca. You get halfway around. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <gasps> oh, this is nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can go now. Thank you. Master? Oh, I just gotta throw up my hood. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard because the cloak is red, so I can't really hide in it very well. Um, I bet that'll blend okay in the, in the night. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna. I, since I have the hood up, I am going to cast uh, Mask of Many Faces and just change myself to a random bystander. But I'm going to keep the hood up so that it's it's harder to tell. Hmm. And what do you look like now? Um, I am a older woman uh, with gray hair, um, dots of freckles, and um, bright, uh, brown eyes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. But I'm gonna stay with the group and be like, I'm still here. I'm just. I'm not different. part of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. So anyone trying to be stealthy, please roll me stealth. Okay. Aaron. No. What am I gonna roll? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think if I prompt, it's not gonna work. It's we'll gonna see. be a nine. Oh. <gasps> No. no it's not. Dang oh. it. That okay, I would have got up and left. <laughs> I'm yes. not joking. <laughs> what you want to re-roll? No, well, oh listen. yeah, can we have? Do we have re-roll? <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. Here's what I would like to do. Okay. I would like to use my spider climb to like duck onto things and surfaces that someone would not see me on a path. Parkour. Does that do anything for the fact that I rolled so bad? <laughs> What'd you roll? A one. You're pushing a curse. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'll say this. Does anyone else have a way? Anyone else roll above a 15? Okay, so I somehow rolled a 21. Wow. Let's go. Would you like to help conceal Curse as you notice she is very bright and visible? I'm bright pink. I'm hey, pink. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. So bad. Hey, you, want, you want a piggyback ride? <laughs> It's okay. Here, just like, just we're gonna cover the. It's excellent, but it's very, very um, bright. Curse has definitively never had a piggyback ride, so you're gonna have to like okay, really just, walk just, her just, through if it. If I just, um, I'm leg. just gonna, I'm just gonna pick you. Okay, she's very just, flexible, uh, so it's uh, just like oh. leg. <laughs> okay, no, uh, 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 okay. Uh, uh, I just, okay, just yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna just take the cloak and just go. Whoop. Nothing says stealth like a piggyback ride. Listen. Yes. She's covered up. Uh, I'm very strong. 
Great. That'll allow you to kind of meet in the middle and assume you just are, you're barely squeaking by. Yeah, I would like, if I can add to that, the cloak I wrap around me and Neela, and now we're just two kids in a trench coat. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm very, very sure. Well. That's so true. you look like a normal person. And right. we're basically like, yeah, just kind of, we're, we're almost as tall as... Luca. <laughs> Up to Luca's shoulder now. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. How was your role? Um, you know, similar to Sage's. <laughs> we are not getting out of here. Uh, I'm kinda, so sorry. I think this is my fault. So uh, that's going to be a total of eight. Okay. How about you guys? Uh, I gave myself proficiency, uh, so it's a five instead. Of <laughs> <laughs> How is this happening? Luca. I think we have all the numbers. So. No. How dark is it outside? Oh. I mean, bird. it's it's like three thirty in the morning. You are a very you're a, you're a dark burb. It's true. So if I'm if I'm a dark burb and I can fly, would that account for anything of me flying in the sky if I rolled a five? God. Hey Vince, we all went roll back. Can we roll again? If you're all no, no, this is great. My characters are back in time. Can our rolls go back in time? Um, <laughs> it was a two one. <clears throat> if you're saying you can fly above the buildings instead, you want to try that instead. I'd say yes. We can forego your stealth roll and say that you're going to try to be completely out of sight as long as you can keep track of the the group here a little bit. If you can, I'm wearing uh, parchment white robes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just going to get in the sky and I'm just going to look down. Those look my look my friends. Yeah. Astrid, how was your roll? I got a six. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait, wait. Only oh, Kaylee did good? Yeah. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> What are we doing? Oh my god. Like, oh, undo it, undo it, undo it. We've already changed time. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Clomping down the trail. Oh, yeah. All of us just. <laughs> okay, well. It's like when you listen to loud music and then you're just really loud after the music. Yeah. yeah. You don't realize how loud you are. Here's what happens. <laughs> time is loud, so we're loud now. Yeah. Honestly, the world's really loud right now. Uh, <laughs> here's the issue. Now, to be fair, for what it's worth, it is raining still. And dark, so dark. It is dark. There are lights in the street, but uh, the, the the sound of the rain does help to muffle noise a little bit. However, you all are finding it hard to find places to duck into to be completely out of sight. That said, you don't see anyone on the streets with you at present. Following Kelsis as uh, he jogs low to the ground, you dodge around streets and alleys. Luca, you, I assume, flying overhead, uh, avoiding particularly strong sources of light and you make your way successfully, the block or so back toward where you initially appeared near the entrance of town. A squat building with a pathetically thatched roof comes into view, and in the back of which is a long series of covered stables. Kelsis peeks up and down the street, <coughs> and is there anything else you'd like to do before you approach the house? Curse my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yamiel! Yeah, oh. Yamiel yeah, sucks so much. <laughs> you called me what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know <what>? Anything <laughs> you'd like to do before you proceed forward? I want to. Can I? It's dark out. I won't be able to see anybody. So never mind. Very well. Uh, great. He darts across the street and creeps up to Ogden's side door, one out of view from most of the city's streets. After a few hard knocks, and then a few more. Followed by another wind up, the door creaks open, and improbably wrinkled old dwarven man peeks his head out of the door. Kelsis, man, it's like three in the fucking morning. I know, I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't urgent. Can we please come in? I think Jibe should talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Ogden peers around and looks at you all. Uh, sure, why the hell not? What's your name? Yeah! Guy, <laughs> oh, no. yeah, what's yours? <laughs> you mocking me? It's way too early in the morning. Yeah, it's past 3 fucking a.m. I'm not mocking you, I'm tired. Man. Uh Walk right <laughs> Amazing. Roll me a, you can choose performance or persuasion. Roll for audacity. <laughs> Roll for the audacity. Uh, let's see. Oh, great. Plus four for persuasion. Uh, it's going to be 12. Mm. A little. Someone speak in my language. 
Uh, and Kelsis enters as well and waves you guys in. Ogden closes the door, and Kelsis immediately starts toward the back. Um, I'm going to get Sylvia lashed up and ready, uh, just back in a moment, and he dashes off. Well, wait a minute, God, God damn it. Ugh. Okay, what is this all about? Uh, I tap you on the shoulder to make you keep talking in the cast guidance as I do so, <laughs> push you forward. We're just trying to get the hell out of town. Oh, where are you trying to head to? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We've gotten in enough trouble already. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get you roped into this. Well, I don't well. wanna get roped into any trouble either. Well, don't. then don't worry about it. We'll be out of your hair in just a okay, second. Okay, I hope you're out of my hair pretty soon then. I, I don't wanna get roped into nothing. Oh, you're totally getting roped into stuff. Kelly says, are you still in their eye? Oh, right. yeah, it's, you know, staying dry and, uh... Right, look, I don't know how to know where all the horses are going. I just gotta know they're coming back after. Yeah, yeah you, definitely. You get your damn horses. Don't worry about it. How long have you been here? How long have you, you, how long oh, have you been Oh, been around these parts near 50 years. 50 years? 50 years. Yeah, you're kidding. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't easy work. No, it's hard work. Horses. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've never ridden one myself. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, oh, you gotta try it sometime. <laughs> How'd you get know? Is this a family business or? No, oh, it's just me. Well, I had parents, but I don't. <laughs> I don't mean what to say I was do? birthed immaculately. I. No, I found the horses myself. Wow, You're making it in your, uh, making your own way in the world. Own really, way. I really respect that. No, oh, I. It means a lot to me. Hear you say that. Hey, we woke you up. Can we get you something to drink? Can we? Can we make you some? There you go. In his house. No. Oh, I'll <laughs> take you. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he finishes your goblet of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it full yeah. every time? <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me. Uh, That's uh, a question. <laughs> in a few moments, Kelsus returns, huffing. <sighs> All right, I've got Sylvie and Sal lashed up to the carriage. That should do us. Abacus of the abyss, Kelsus. God. I didn't say you could have the two best horses. I, look, I know I owe you an all, but I need I need something, seeing as I don't know how long they'll be gone. Um, Not long, you'll get them back real soon. Five Travers. Whoa. That's just five Travers. That's and a lot. Hold on. Kelsus, inflation, what? <laughs> Kelsus oh, yeah, fishes exactly in his pockets. Inflation. I have one. Did we actually get ours from the Barker? Our money? Oh, yeah. you were not prepaid. You're Aww. joking. You're telling me that I didn't get my apple? Oh, you got your apple. <laughs> You're the only one that got paid. Also, I never asked how much. I assumed it was one, and then everyone else was supposed to get five. <laughs> well, we were supposed to get six. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, uh, uh, <laughs> my guy here asked for, what was it, five just now? Five, Travers. That's not each, it's just total. I'll, I'll toss in two. Oh, money bags over here. Uh, I take mine back. No, God, no, please. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, ask for money. I do want them. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just like randomly insulting the person with the money. <laughs> Look, You'll it's very early in the morning. No, you take the two and we're done. Yo, how's that no. wezzy? For the insult. How's that wezzy Travers exchange rate doing uh, 400 years in the past? Cause, like, if oh. Can... I, uh, I'm not going to be in Kirahar. I, I'll take him, but it's double the rate. What? You can roll persuasion, by the way, for yeah. the, the two Travers comment. Double the rate, which is at this time. Depends the color of Wesley you got. Oh, We're not going to talk about it. it. Oh, buddy. But it's a six, but I rolled a one. Here's okay. the, the I need more two. Uh, I'll do it for four. All right, great. There's one then. I put in the last one. Three, four. That's five. No, oh, yeah, you, you're good. Yeah, you I, I put in. Okay, yeah, here we go. Ah, oh, damn. <sighs> Jive looks at the eight that he won. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know you can. Can I roll that. some sort of insight just to see if he's like, if he feels heavy in a pocket? Oh, yeah, you can roll it, sure. <laughs> ah, these dice suck. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We can move on with the story. It's a 10. <laughs> he <laughs> seems <laughs> averagely heavy. <laughs> um, Ogden, sufficiently satisfied, grunts in the direction of the stables. <laughs> Thank you very much. He almost seems like he's falling asleep where he's standing. Wild. Let's just 
it's this is time the most to go. exciting Let's thing go. that's happened to your extremely wrinkly face in so long, and you're going to sleep through it. He's out. <laughs> Kels is... I tried to take my Travers. I was going to say, yeah, can we take the money back? You see he's, like, holding him in this death grip, yeah. like, white-knuckled, standing up. Don't try and steal gold from a dwarf. Just saying. I'm going to try. I just, I've, I've, I've had bad experience. Roll sleight of hand. I don't know how the yeah. dice are going today. We're making some really bold moves. Uh, okay, 15? Hmm, okay. You pull You pull one out. And just, I slap mm. him in the face. Stay awake or you're going to lose your money. Oh, oh. And then I hand it back. Oh, no. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your assistance. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah, oh, just, look, I... Uh, Go to sleep upstairs like a normal dwarf. <laughs> I am very, I'm out of it, okay? It's very early in the morning. We could be murderers. Please take the carriage and leave. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could be murderers. Don't do that. But then don't fall asleep in front of us. Oh. You could stay asleep. That We're not murderers. Oh, okay. <laughs> No one's pointing to you for guidance. You're the only one talking sense around here. Thank you. You can tell me about it. Yeah, all oh, these, these guys. Oh. This was the highlight of my day. Oh boy, me too. I'm getting roped in now. Okay. Oh, no. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go to the yeah, carriage. I'm gonna go. find Kelsis. Uh, Kelsis, yeah, Kelsis thanks him and leads you all out back, where waiting before the open doors of the stable is a two horse carriage. The breath of the great Nuvug horses, like the incredible plumes of steam from quenching a fire. These massive freaking horses. All right, uh, let's load up. If we keep a good pace, we can be in Desna within a couple of days. Um, there should be room in there for everyone. Or, um, oh, right, you, you wanted to sit up front, right? The three of you? Yep, that's um, still doing that. I'm pretty sure I mean, I'm that still the there. I don't think oh, I did you again? In. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no one's known as the absolute Luca. <laughs> no, we lost a bet. <laughs> so, Luca, I was going to ask. Yes, please. Um, can I kind of be like an aerial, like, beep, 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 look around and make sure that the path that we're going on is relatively safe? Yeah. Roll persu- uh, per- perception. perception. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Roll perception. Time for my perception for roll. Perception. That's a nice. Per- I I can perceive things. Thirteen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you can keep an eye out. Um, I will say that you've been holding this. You've been holding this for a little while. Yeah. Your wings won't tolerate 100%. a lot more. I wanted to do just a little bit of a look. Once I saw they go into the carriage, I wanted to swoop down and then okay, get awesome. in. So I wanted yeah. to just like see the general area before I went mm. into it. So then, yeah, I mean, it looks fairly clear from where you're standing. Granted, visibility is quite yeah. low, um, given the night and the rain, but at least like a little ways out from the carriage and then the immediate area of the city here seems pretty clear. Sick. I'm gonna swoop, I'm gonna swoop down dead silent. Oh. So what are you guys doing? Oh, <laughs> you are very quiet. You have those like, those, 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 Quiet feathers that, like, you know, like, like, like an owl. Owls have, yes. 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 Who? Uh, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Are all of us going to fit in the front? The three of us? That's too many people. I think that's too many people. It's going to be cozy. Like a little bit of a hip smushy. Maybe I'm going to go on the back. It's Hang weird on. to have that many people. Hang on. Yes. You're, it's acceptable for you to be out, isn't it? Sort of. I mean, comparatively. Yes, I. Well, I mean, there is a curfew in general, but as far as I know, I'm not currently being hunted. Yeah, so why don't, like, not to be, uh, throw you right under the the wagon, as it were, but uh, you started it. So, um, well, you did. It's just not you, but you did. I'm not going to think about it. I'm still working on that myself. Yeah, so maybe we just are all in the back of the wagon. I mean, I don't look like anybody. Oh, that's true, you could be up there. That's a good point. I guess me and the old lady? Yeah. (laughs) Thanks, I guess. Not to take Um, that away from you two. I mean, look at you. For space and um, efficiency. Me and the Gran. All right. Um, Yes, I suppose I could do that. But we should get going. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, Indeed. Kelsis gets up in the driver's seat and offers you a a hand up as well. Do you all pile into the back? It is a covered carriage with a flap that uh, ties off in the back. Yeah, Curse has slid all the way in, and she's like reading the little page again. Aww. It's very cute. 
Uh, wonderful. Well, calluses give the reins a toss, and the horses start down the road. Um, as you all settle into the carriage, are you getting up to or doing anything specific now that you're in and the ride has begun? I want to see if I can spot a raven. The... Roll perception. Perception. <laughs> Roll perception. Roll perception. Roll perception. 19 plus 5. Ooh! Okay. Um, I'm not going to do math, but it's going to be the math. 24. 24. You cast your eye out through the open front and the <clears throat> slits in the back uh, of the wagon's uh, canvas cover, looking for that familiar raven you've come so accustomed to seeing, always just on your tail. Though the night is dark, um, though it's dark, it's raining, it's storming, visibility is low, you do not see, nor do you even feel the presence of the raven or what you've come to believe it represents. Which would gotcha. be... In time, in time, in time. Okay. Early days. Early days. Um, okay. I'm gonna keep an eye out, but I'm also gonna keep an eye on the road as well. Like, that was like a secondary, and I'm just gonna... And you're kind of like peeping out the front a little bit. Well, oh, you're in the front, I, you're I'm sitting down. Front. You're right, you're in the driver's, the passenger yeah. seat. That's right, that's right. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> Sorry, I, just, I see an old lady here, and I forget. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Uh, beautiful, yes. Anyone else? Um, I think I might like sidle up to drive a little bit. Mm -hmm. and just. Okay, so if we run into trouble. Uh, yes. M murder, yeah? Just straight up, you think? Well, uh, we can. If we, are, if, we, if we can't avoid it, are you. Pro are, are you one. I'm trying to figure out who among this crew is. Prepared to do what's necessary to like get out of this alliance. Oh, I see. Pardon? I, that's safe. It's it's DTM. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Down to murder. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> that. Hi, this is Sage. Oh. Um, <laughs> I have. I mean, simple rule: if they are going to kill you, or you're going to kill them, it's a uh, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just looking around. You know, I'm not sure other people are as comfortable with that. Oh, uh, yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm particularly, uh, like, I don't uh, rush into it with that intention, but, um, but I'm... Yeah, of course I, not. I, Who would do that? I do like my life. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I also don't want my face to get messed up. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, me either. High it's a priority. Face. It's a good face. It's a good right face. back at yeah. you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, good to know. Just thought I would, um, just kind of get my bearings. You know. That makes sense. I mean, it must be unusual for you to also be on land for so long, I would assume, right? Yeah. Uh, well spotted. Um, <laughs> you, but you, you're more comfortable on land. I prefer the ocean. Yeah. It's better. Easier. Yeah. Less patrolling. Yeah, the walking is terrible, eh? <laughs> yes, I could not agree with Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. The cart comes to a somewhat sudden stop <laughs> oh, shit. in the few minutes you've spent having this conversation and settling in. <clears throat> uh, Astrid, yeah. out front, you and Kelsis <clears throat> see five riders on horses blocking the road, having just come out of the forest ahead of you. You recognize the one closest to you. It's Cal. He's shouting over the rain, pouring down, his maroon goggles catching the glint of the moon. Got somewhere to be, Kelsis? And Kelsis sort of looks, just a side eye back into the cart. Let us pass, Cal. You wanted them gone. Just let this happen. Let us go. It, it doesn't have to be anything more than this. And he responds, New orders from up the line. The lieutenants would like to speak with your friends. Sounds like Oris put out a notice and folks matching their description. And that doesn't look too good for you either, Kelsis. Round them up. Lieutenants want them alive. And Cal rears his horse and rides back into the field. I would like to... Um cast Thaumaturgy on a nearby cart that's also probably at this kind of like hold up. Uh, it's just you, currently. There's no other carts at yes. all. Just three in the morning. Yeah. Shit. 
Um, then I'll just put it over, like, in the distance away from us, mm-hmm. of just, like, a loud, like, explosive sound. Roll me, uh, let's see here. Roll me sound that a. From point of your choice. Qua? It's just an instantaneous sound that originates from the point of Got your choice. Got you. Uh, roll me either, you can choose performance, persuasion, or deception for that one. Okay. Gotta be good at one of these things. It's a 13. Okay, and that was the sound of what, one more time? An explosion. An explosion, great. So, a, a, this pff, massive sound of an explosion goes off in the distance, and you see all of the rioters react to it, looking for the source, the noise, even out front, like you hear this as well, and they look for the source of the noise, almost like their horse is also stuttering a bit and, and, and rearing up a little bit. And then after a few seconds, notice no flash, no fire, and they seem to just gradually begin to surround the carriage. <clears throat> and you hear one of them call out, Come on out! Weapons down! Let's not make this harder than it needs to be! Cal's gone, yeah? yeah Cal has ridden off, yes. Cal has oh, Cal's gone. Off. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna just take a look at the, the, the person that I know that does a bunch of magic stuff, because I'm like... Oh yeah, I would love to get just an eye line out the window mm-hmm. at the one talking. Do they have the most official looking outfit on out of the people left? Yeah, you can take a little peek out of there. That's an easy thing. Um, <clears throat> I'd say all the remaining four callers seem to be dressed very similarly. I'd say the one speaking, you notice, has what appears to be a silver stripe mm-hmm. down the arm versus Cal's gold. Uh, I just look at him and go, relax. And I cast command. Oh. That is a wisdom save, yeah? Wisdom save of 12. <laughs> <laughs> I love being a level two. <laughs> that face. Yeah, dude, like, you rolled the normal roll, probably. I rolled a nat 20. Yeah, of course oh! you did. Oh. It's well, okay. they're gone, no more nat 20. This but was such only, a good use of one of my three spell slots. It only, it only counts if Luca calls it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, well, so to resolve that real quick, you, uh, you, command, you cast command on him, and he hears you say this, and you see almost as if something passes over his eyes for a moment before he, he kind of blinks it out, looks at you. Get out of the carriage. Should we start firing? Make me. Two of them roll up to the back. First his hands light with fire. How would you make him? And one, each of them grabs one flap of the back, the canvas, and pulls it open. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna throw a firebolt. Roll initiative. Yeah! Oh, no! First initiative. Oh my god! And I'm playing the most scared character yeah. in the world. Oh no. <laughs> um, Sorry, going last. Wow, the mood just went from here to here for so <laughs> many of us. Every time we roll. Oh, no. um, okay, so we're gonna go from uh, the top down, twenty through twenty-five. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. I got. I got too excited. I love the eagerness. Um, Fifteen through twenty. Nineteen. Okay. 17. Astrid, I wrote Adrid, that's fine. <laughs> with Adrid. 19. Adrid. Uh, that is Pry with 17? Yes. Um, and then 10 through 15. 13. Okay. I'm oh, getting nervous, no. guys. Uh, <laughs> you're nervous. Remember, there's uh, bonuses. 5 through 10? 9. 7. Okay, so Neela. Baby. And then Luca. Did you roll? Yo, Jai, what did you get? Jai, did you? 6. Oh, oh, bless. Baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, you do have an action already prepared and going off. That will resolve first. Okay. Um, you are getting the surprise on them. Um, so, you're firing a fireball. Firebolt? Mm-hmm. Firebolt. Is that right? Yeah. Um, at the collar holding the left or right flap of the canvas. Neither of which, by the way, is the one who appears to be in charge that you tried to command. Right, um, the direction we're heading, if I'm firing it out the back of the carriage, we're trying to go directly behind us, right? If we were to be trying to pass through, right? Where we want the carriage to go. Oh, you wanna go the other me. way forward. Oh yeah, behind you, yes, it's behind, behind you, that's right. Okay, excellent. What's to the left and the right? Uh, in terms of people or terrain? Uh, terrain. Uh, to your right, you have forest and eventually mountains. To your left, a field. Uh, I'm gonna uh, hit the one on the left. Okay, great. Roll Hopefully. it. A hit and damage. Ooh. What did you? What? What happened? What? What happened? Talk to me. I'm it's so a nine sorry. to hit. <coughs> you sound like you're trying to sell this to me. Uh-huh. Right 
Um, but it's very surprising. Can you work with a nine? <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? Look, all I got is nine. Um, you fire the bolt off, and it appears that the saturation of the canvas from the rain and his outfit as well, you see it hit him for sure, but it seems to almost glance off and sizzle as it um, douses in the wet. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Uh, do I get a full turn I can take a bonus action? I'd say for the sake of this being a surprise round, you will be able to go fully first and then on your initiative again. Excellent. Uh, I would like to um, reach into my little pouch of shiny pebbles and I would like to throw a magic stone Yay. as a bonus action. Roll it. Okay, that will definitely hit. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. Roll wow. damage. Yes. Let's go. It's a, what is my... And then it's just, a D6? Just... Wow. I thought it was way weaker than that, to be honest. That's not a bad rock. I don't have a single D6 here. Pretty strong I rock. forgot D6s. Would of... you like one? Are yes, you? Please. I would say, yeah, I don't know how I, I like, like Kaylee's right now. She's doing my best. Here you go. Um, okay. here's, here's the stone. Hellish. Um, that goes thank like, you. That's four. <laughs> uh, just four points of damage. Um, four but I want to try and aim for the eye. Great, yeah. Ooh. The firebolt goes off and like gets gets him in the toes. Like what the hell? And as it's turning, <laughs> <laughs> right in the eye, um, dealing four points of damage. Uh, beautiful. Would you believe that is exactly how I got out of the circus? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I think I, I think I now have seen a it. little deja. And that would be your action, right? Yep, that's it. Wonderful. So then that rolls over to Astro with the nineteen. Right now, two of the collars are in the back, holding the flap open. And the other two are to either side, sort of coming around the rear. Okay. Can I say something to the Kelsis and then take an action? Yeah. Say, uh, get undercover, and then I'm going to oh. fire an Eldritch Blast at the the one talking that Priv The was one that Pry tried to command. Okay, yeah. No. That no. One. It was a one? It was a one. Kelsis is dead. <laughs> <laughs> no. But um, a plus five. He feels very we no, kill getting him. a nat one on an attack yeah. is a whole different deal. Yeah. Um, Love this I'll drink to that. I, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Here we go. I'm going to roll a d20 on my end. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. We just now. That one. Here's the thing I can, I can flavor it because I do not know if my magic works right now. <gasps> I am very concerned. I do not know if my magic can work. Tell me. Oh no. Don't make me do this. Yes, good. Yes, good. Do it. Do it. Tell me, albeit with half damage, tell me how you hit Pry. <gasps> no! Do um, it. my foot, so when I get up, um, I actually fall off the cart. Oh. And on my cloak, I slide because it's wet. I'll even help you a bit. Yeah. Just to make it not look like you just totally, no, just, I totally just being the pry just, here. <laughs> Shit. Um, I'd say as you gear up, because remember the, the commander uh, is on the other side of the cart from you. Kelsis is sitting on the left, you're on the right. You kind of, kind of let's shoot around Kelsis to get that shot. As you're getting up to angle yourself, the collar around the back of you gets an elbow into you to knock you back down. Okay. And so you, as you tumble, it just fires off into the cart itself. Okay. That's oh. six damage. That's halved. Oh. Yeah, that's half. I, oh. I got 12 oh, for God. my attack. So Pry, a, a beam of magic comes flying through the front of the cart and catches you. Love that thing. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, definitely Murphy also, Hiller. my eyes this went. Murphy <laughs> 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 uh, You have a bonus action. Um, Panic? Is panicking a free action? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no. Probably a no. That's a no. Would um, you like to reposition yourself at all? Yeah, I want to get face uh, not me, please again. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and turn around and hit the bad guys. Next time. I, I will try. So I will try so hard. Love. Um, I'm gonna get up off the, the cart and just move away. Um, <laughs> just leave. <laughs> just, go. just walk away. It's been cool, but I'm, I'm just gonna uh, take like five feet and just yeah, get some distance, like yeah. better position there. Great, awesome. Uh, that's gonna go over to Pry now. Tight. Uh, I think I would love to think that that hit her like across, like just below her clavicle, and and like sort of sailed across the front of her outfit, and uh, it like tears it open, but she's bleeding, just uh, extremely viscous, like black and it Whoa. just pours down the front of the parchment. And uh, I look, I just give you a look like, well, that's a later conversation. Yeah. That sucked a lot. <laughs> um, 
And uh, pick up, uh, I pick up my book and I open it to a random page and it's a diagram of a crossbow. And I reach into my pocket and pull out a light crossbow and I'm gonna fire it. Uh, uh, the dude that do, magic didn't work, so we'll hit him with uh, we'll hit him with a bolt. I love yes. it. Yeah. Old old school, baby. Old school, baby. Go. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Is it mine? <laughs> you know what? He just chooses to die out of pity. <laughs> <laughs> if you think I won't take it, so <laughs> <you're> a nerd. <laughs> Just you know what? Hang on. I, let me get this for you. <laughs> Thanks, dog. I'm dying. Thanks, dog. I can't be the only one getting damage here. Um, yes, I mean, you fire, but you're, again, having to try to yeah. aim through the canvas, which is yeah. a bit tricky. Sweet. So also, it's not your it was hard fault. to level it with, you know, I'm bleeding out. <laughs> I'm dying, my friends. <laughs> this is bad. Cool. Take, 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 take. Goes wild. <laughs> Hate to see it. Uh, anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Uh, truly, no. <laughs> Great. No, um, I'm good. Well, it's now their turn. Yeah. Um, so they're going to go. The two in the back end of both go for curse. Um, and you see, they both level hand crossbows at you. <laughs> it's a rough day. What's your AC? Oh, it's a thirteen. Okay. The, the highest roll was an eleven. <laughs> um, so they both seem to be a bit shaken by the fact that you're like fighting back so much, and they both just shoot blindly into the carriage. Uh, the bolts, which just whiz by all of you, but don't make contact. Um, and then they seem to try and start backing up from the rear of the carriage to get a better, like, vantage point for shooting. Are they within five feet of me? They are. Do you... Are you a variant human with sentinel? Is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do I remember that right? Listen, I don't roll very well. I need as many chances as possible. <laughs> yes, they attack within five feet of you. Tell me what happens. Uh, I'm gonna pick, uh... The one on the left that got hit with a rock looks like maybe his eyes swelled a little bit, and maybe I've got like a little bit of an edge. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, just level my axe at him. That's not great. Uh, <laughs> it's a twelve. Oh no, that meets. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. All right. We need help. We just need to find people as squishy as we are. Excellent. Yeah. So that's thirteen points of slashing. Let's damage. go. Thirteen? Woo! Um, and I'm not raging yet, baby. Wow. Uh, <laughs> holy cow. Okay, so you you carve this fellow who just tumbles right off the horse, and what? you see like he's bleeding out and scrambling back. He looks like he's very close to the end already. That was a hell of a gash. You stay there. All right. Next. Uh, beautiful. So then, let's see. They both went for a curse. One on the side, the commander goes for you naturally, and oh, mm -mm. no, no, yeah, terrible roll. It's, it's, it's okay. so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can never help with terrible for your double. I know, class. right? <laughs> How do you feel about six? Remaining HP. Can we work with six? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can we do with six? Seems to be our number for this episode. <gasps> only got six. Yeah, only got six for you, buddy. Okay. You can take five. I only need the last one. Okay. Oh my god! Oh my god! Out no. of my head. Okay, so Can a rapier um, thrusts through the canvas and catches you in the other side, um, and it deals. And I swear to God, I promise you, I did this math. It takes five points of health <laughs> off of you. Oh, I almost wish Luke called it out. I'll say it again. Jack really into the camera. The only hit point that matters is the last one. I'm fine. Hello. Let's go. Oh, I should have. I should have. Let's go. I should have taken some different spells. <laughs> cool. This is good and fine. Holy. Um, the other caller has been distracted trying to mess up Astrid's spell, so yeah. they are forfeiting Thanks. their action there. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, they are preparing their hand crossbow though. Um, that rolls over to Curse. Okay. So. Um, I would like to take my bonus action first, and um, Curse is just going to like reach down to the ground and then draw her hands upward, and out of like a small flame in the center forms um, a like large um, kind of tiger-looking uh, beast made entirely of fire. Hell yeah! Um, <gasps> with like large fire claws, and it's uh, kind of snarling and growling in front of us towards the edge of the carriage. Um, and that is my wildfire spirit. It will go after me in initiative. Um, and then for my action, I will try again to fire a firebolt 
um, at the one who is doing um, too well. On the <laughs> also, the good one. Okay, yeah, the good one. <clears throat> because the one you initially firebolted is not doing good. Yes, exactly. Uh, the wildfire spirit helped. can handle that. <laughs> Great. Uh, so yes, roll that. Okay. I'll take it back. Some of them are definitely down to mana. <laughs> and you see, okay. you see, she is like rearing back on her horse as well. Fifteen to hit. That hits. Okay. And D ten. All right. Uh, that is six points of damage. Okay. Um, we love six right. in this house. And so, yeah, you fire off that bolt of fire, catching the collar, in this case, in a much more um, workable location, as you see the fire singe through clothing into skin. Okay. And my wildfire spirit will just go for a, a slash on the other one. Ooh. Okay, I mean, roll that. They are also prone, so take advantage on that. Perfect. So, uh, it is... Okay. Dex modifier. Um, you get advantage because it's prone. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, that makes it an 18 to hit for that Let's guy. Let's go. Yeah, it <laughs> Come on. Da, 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 da. Get out of tail. Uh, I need that to be a shirt. Uh, sure. <laughs> Somebody roll tail. me a D6. Oh, I ain't grabbing here. a D6. No, Just roll it. Do it. You can do it. It's a three. Three. Um, okay, that is five points of fire damage. Nice. nice. Let's go. He had three health left, so Ooh, yeah. Yes. Describe how the wildfire spirit finishes this uh, caller, who is, by the way, was attempting to flee. <laughs> Good. Excellent. So as soon as I fire off the fire bolt, uh, that's kind of its cue to go, and it just launches forward and leaps down on top of the prone uh, collar or whatever, mm -hmm. and almost like consumes it in fire. It looks oh, like it's yes. going to bite down on it, but instead it just lights the entire body of flame. Oh, oh, and so cool. you hear the blood curdling screaming as you see skin boil and peel, and that's 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 that's, that's curtains for that collar. That's all, folks. <laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> it doesn't usually do that. Wow. <laughs> uh, and I'll start moving. <laughs> Um, beautiful. Uh, so then, that is your turn, yeah? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, Nila, be a bita. All right. Uh, so I'm just gonna, after dealing a little bit of violence, really enjoying it, gonna go into a rage. Yes. Um, uh. So I'm just my. Uh, I'm just gonna get like a little bit more of like a slightly manic smile on my face. Where like normally I'm just like very like low key and a little bit sardonic, but now mm. it's just a little bit more tight. Um, and my eyes get very, very focused as I start to move out of the cart, uh, bringing my axe back around to swing at the closest collar to me. Great, yeah, that would be uh, the fellow who cursed is hit with the firebolt, so if I absolutely roll it. That's... <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Ma'am. Um, that's, that's enough to hit, it's no, uh, 16. Great, Ooh. yeah, roll that damage. Nice. That big axe. Ooh, uh, it's a the, the big axe. <laughs> Literally a big axe. Eight points of slashing damage. Great. Uh, okay, that's hurting. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, describe the hit. Like, how does this happen? So, as I, I'm just gonna kind of like, like on my, because I'm imagining even even being short, I can't stand up fully in the cart. Um, so, like, kind of like on my knees, like moving out, kind of muscling my way through yeah. and. Alighting back on the ground, and is this guy still on his horse? Uh, this one is, yes. She is, yes. Kind of um, coming uh, down, avoiding the horse if I can. Because um, we might need that later. Uh, and just. <laughs> That's why. Uh, coming across. Just gently navigating the horse <laughs> shape. Like. <laughs> but, but no, but coming like trying to like, maybe like just like chest. Great, right? and yeah, it, it, open cuts, her up. it cuts through, uh, through cloak through vest and just straight down in there, um, looking like it's done some serious damage. Uh, and is that your turn? Uh, yeah, that's all I can do. I don't have any bonus actions at the moment, or use my bonus action to rage, actually. So I'll just, um, well, I have, oh, I'm sorry. I've got movement. Move. Uh, Leave. the closest one? Uh, so besides that one, there's one near the front of the cart who just like knocked Astrid out of the way. And then one that Pry is dealing with sort of through the canvas on the left side of the cart. Is there a way that I can get within five feet of more than one? If you were to get around the outside of the cart and like between the front and the side, you could be within five feet of two of them-ish with Kelsis kind of between you, who's also just like chilling near the front. 
Yeah, we can Ish. pull his weight a little bit. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll. He's a lover. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> and rolled low on initiative. Yeah, I can tell. Um, I I'll make that move to try and to try and get in between a little bit. I, I'll take the attack of opportunity. Okay, yeah. I mean, the caller, the commander, will have a go as you run past. Um, which trying to navigate and twist around the horse, just swinging the rapier down and misses you as you dodge by. Um, and that brings us to Luca. Let's go. First and foremost, are you outside of the cart? No. You're in the cart. In the- this is gonna be really awkward. Okay, um, <laughs> who who is um, remaining of the enemies that are in front of us? You have one that is on the other side of the canvas from Pry. Okay. One who's now been dehorsed by Neela in the back of the cart, and one more in the front of the cart, like near the um, the driver's seat, who is very healthy. Got it. I'm gonna to go to the guy that's near the driver's seat. Okay. And I'm going to use the shove action. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna use the shove action on him and try to just like get him away. Um, he's doing it in kind of like a like a kind of like scared way for yeah. a minute. But the second that he like impacts with the person, you can specifically see that his body goes from like blanky and scared to kind of like <clears throat> like super muscular. Yeah. Um, do you have to roll? Do you have a shove action? Yes, you're gonna be rolling for that. And does that remind me, someone who knows, is that a strength or is that simply a special attack action, like an actual attack roll? My thought is that it's just an attack. I, I believe yeah. you're correct about Using that. Using the attack action. Yes, yeah. let's roll the attack. Okay, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. Oh, please, that's gonna look so cool if I do this right. That is a, It's <laughs> <laughs> an eight. Total? Total. Luca. Luca. It's raining. It's okay, I can still make it work. <laughs> However, I'll say, for it's flavor's so sake, this is a contest. Oh, that's okay. a It will be contested by the writer. Pray for a low number. Everybody? This okay. is the time for me to yes. predict. I'm predicting a Come six. On. Oh. Well, now I'm bummed out. Damn it. It Why? wasn't a six, it was a three. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, that's amazing! Okay. So somehow, you don't shove as well as you hoped, but the, the guy takes a tumble. Six. Each okay. Right there. So after I do that, Per you noticing that my complete demeanor has completely changed, I'm going to Bold turn... of you to think that with one hit point left, I'm looking at you. Like, that's, that's, that's completely fine, <laughs> because for a moment, for in a second, you kidding. will. I'm 100% um, like, okay. He's, he's, he's going to push, and then he's going to turn back, and he's going to see that you're wounded, and he's going to take his wings and actually wrap around you. And um, it's interesting, because... Um, for, like, you see his facial expression is entirely different. You see that he is stone-faced, just ice in the veins, just ready to go. Um, and I'm going to use um, a patient defense mm-hmm. and use a key point to take a dodge action. Um, and um, I'm gonna look down at you and say, I'm gonna say, are you okay, friend? I lean into your ear and just say, no. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. And that's my turn. <laughs> Great. Um, and then finally, Jibe, I will say for what it's worth, you're noticing something. The person who's now been um, dehorsed via axe uh, by Neela seems to be scrambling back on the horse and attempting to flee the scene. Uh, the one that uh, was just shoved by Luca also seems to be now taking in the carnage happening and is trying to get back on the horse, ostensibly to get out of there. The only person remaining steadfast is this commander who seems still trying to cut Pry through the canvas. Yeah, uh, I mean, we have long distance spell folks that can probably wipe out the other two. Um, I'm just, we've got rapiers in the mix. I've got canvas all around me. This is oddly familiar. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so what- Canvas, by the way, which has now been largely shredded on that side of the car, so you're now able to get a better look at the commander on the other side cutting into it. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> here's the thing, is that I got a guy coming after one of my buds. <laughs> I'm one of the few- f- This fucking guy. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> this fucking guy comes out of nowhere, so it's, we're just trying to get- we're following directions. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I'm not lawful. I don't care. Um, uh, but uh, one of the first folks that I like made eye contact with and kind of sort of like connected in like a little way. Uh, what I would like to do is pop up 
onto the top of the wagon and slip down to the back of that commander who's focused here. Yeah. And I would like to just sneak attack this dude with my two daggers get him. out, yes. drop down, and just get the drop on this roll person em. right there. Let's roll them hits. All right, here we go. Ooh. That was a great roll. Thank you. <laughs> here, take a. If it lands on something good, it counts. Oh, <laughs> was it really? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was like 15, I think. Sounds like it counts to me. Sounds like it counts <laughs> if we say it out loud. Here we go. Uh, Even better. Crit. Uh, okay, with my first one, that's going... It was going... kind of cocked, that's all it I was kind of cocked. cocked. It was cocked. cocked. It was cocked. It was cocked. It was cocked. It was cocked. 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 Yeah. With my first one... <laughs> <laughs> this is our eighth take of this moment. Uh, that's going to be a ten. Okay. With the first one. Uh, my first dagger attack. And then with my second, this is just straight up, uh, that's going to be a twelve. Okay. The first does not hit. I will say that. Do I get advantage on that roll as I'm dropping down? Oh, that's true. Because you know what? He is focused. One more roll. One more roll. One more roll. Yeah. Wouldn't the first one you be take 12? your advantage? Take your advantage. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Come on. Okay. Uh, so that first one is going to be a 12 as well. Both 12s. Okay. You can also reroll the second one, see if you get a better one. I love that. Oh, goodness, baby. Uh, no, stick with that 12. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I will say... You're trying so hard to tell us the 12 is not going to do it. We need help. That's so I, good. So I say, here's I the thing. Here's the thing. Let's all talk about it. Here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I will say, you you get the impression ordinarily this commander is someone who's a little bit harder to, uh, to really tangle with. Someone more experienced, sure. but... Um, not every day does a cat drop out of the night <laughs> um, onto you. I'd say those 12s will get you hits just barely. Let's roll that damage That's with sneak so attack. Here we go. DM. You are such a kind man. <laughs> Try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for my we first attack, exactly. <clears throat> that's going to be a five plus. Uh, that's going to be a six. And then for my second attack, that is going to be six. So that's 12. You said you would only do one of those noises. <laughs> no, these are squelching noises now. No, I have plenty the, of those. Yeah, that was a sneak attack okay, with the plus. <clears throat> so that's a total of 12. Wonderful. 12 damage. Oh. How do you drive these daggers in there? Tell me. Uh, right to the back muscles, because that is where uh, most of your driving force is. If you are, like, stabbing someone, a lot of that force is coming from, like, the back of your core. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm attacking that to just get him to even just disengage from the sword to begin with. And I'm also then going to stab, pull out, use a bonus action to just hide. So it's to doom and then rain. <laughs> and he like reaches back expecting fuzz and it's like <laughs> nothing. However, you have sufficiently demoralized the group. Um, a few things happen right now. The collar in the back. Um, having been pushed a little ways away, is able to get back on her horse and get away without incurring a attack of opportunity. However, the other two still standing, the one in front, is close enough to both Luca and Astrid to receive opportunity attacks from both of them. Whoop. And the one on the side is close enough to Neela and Jibe to receive opportunity attacks from both of them as well. Where am I? So all y'all, you're still in the cart, I imagine. No, I was. I said I was moving at the end of oh, my turn, the so back, I was trying right? to leave the cart as well. Yeah. Where did you go to? Um, I would have just headed towards wherever probably the rest of the group was going, towards wherever Neela. I mean, I you know. can take an attack on the commander if you'd like. Okay. If you're nearby. Okay. Oh, you know, Simitar. Pride, you're in the cart facing the commander. You also <laughs> take one there if you want as well. Everybody oh. hit! Oh, thank you so much. Ooh. <laughs> Did not hit. Um, yeah. I got a six. My dice have, are done. Can oh, somebody just pass you. me that it's bag the of dice? Matters. Thank you. I need a d6 real bad. I've got a bunch of d6 things. And Am I also attacking? You can, yeah. I do that. Cool. Great. Uh, I rolled a 17. Uh, yes. I don't have a melee weapon in my hand, so I just hit him, I guess. <laughs> Deck <laughs> the him. fucker out. Just, uh. Great, so that's one point of damage from you. Yay. But like. <laughs> How cool would it be if I like re like revealed it with my wing and you were just like Bah! right when I opened up my wing. Yes. <laughs> it was like an ink splotch on his face. <clears throat> um, how do we do over here? I actually got something. Uh, 19 to hit. So that is um, 9 points of damage. Great. Oh, Holy God. I got a 21 to hit. And I have 4 points of damage. Jesus. Uh, I got a 14 and a 12. Oh, God. <laughs> I did 19 to hit and I got 
Seven damage. Oh god, <laughs> what was your roll? Was I got a six, <laughs> so I did not have any <laughs> That's our number of the episode. I'm thinking back to like the Charlie Brown, I got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, however, it's, trust me, it is enough. Like, the person you just, um, you, that you're on right there does manage to take the hit, shrug you off, and gallop away. However, um, this fellow on the side, the commander, just gets in, like, the blink of an eye, absolutely shredded up by several people. There's there's fur flying. Like, it's just, it's it's a mess back there. I'm just trying All to want. imitate Neela's motion with my scimitar, because I've absolutely never used it, really. <laughs> It's like doing this with a similar. Uh huh. A hundred percent. I'm doing what she did with the axe. I'm just like beautiful. Hey. <laughs> All I wanted was to have kicked him into Nila. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god, yeah. This this person's just pate at this point. <laughs> Yum. Um, well, the last caller bested Kel- uh, Kelsis scrambles back into the driver's seat of the carriage. Uh, get in, 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 in. Let's go, go. And I'm he, like, sorry, we're a bit preoccupied. Scrambles like get the reins back. Realizing that the callers are still, some of them, alive and possibly regrouping. Would you okay. Wait, wait, hang I'm on. Can... Like, are they fleeing or do we need to take care of this? These ones do seem like they are definitively fleeing down the road and are out they of 60 sight. feet away yeah. yet? Well, now. Uh, <laughs> oh, did you want to do this before they got yeah, there? No, you I totally just... can! I'm just I, will, with you. I will actively not heal myself to try to pick off a bad boy. Too. Okay, yeah, you know what? Y'all can both fire up one more like Hail Mary. I would love, I really I would love a wisdom save. From downtown! Told the to dead. Okay. Safe place. You have to beat a 12. I got a 4. Let's go. Amazing. Ooh. And they've already been damaged, I bet. Yes, they have. Yeah. Go, go, go. Nothing happens. Oh no, Astrid! I got a 2! Oh. Oh. What happened to all my nice? Oh no, use some of mine. No. Uh, they roll so well. I snap my book shut, and that's the sound instead of uh, the sound of bells, and they take Ooh. six points of damage. Okay, yeah. Um, yes. Do you aim for anyone specifically? Because uh, there is okay. one still bleeding out from an axe wound. Yeah, Mila. I want one that looks mostly dead. Okay. I would love to close the book. So on you that. see her just like just clinging to consciousness, galloping away. And then all of a sudden, you see like blood running from her ears and just collapses I'll off make into it black. the dirt. It is, it is it's just inky, inky, inky black, inky blood. black, <laughs> inky black blood just pouring from her ears yeah. as she collapses onto the road. And the horse is like, nope, keeps going. <laughs> uh, and there's another one still going. There is one more who is still taking off. Yeah. Did you blast? I did not. I didn't even get a, it. It was a two. I did not hit. Thank you for uh, it not being it went one again. just out there. <sighs> Still, yeah. uh, I would like to pull out my crossbow and just try to get that last one. Let's go. I got a range of 80. Also, hey, doing this, roll advantage. Uh, Astrid, as you fire off that Eldritch Blast, you see them try to duck out of the way in just the right way that gets them a little bit sideways and makes them much more easy for you to hit as well. Great, 17. 17 hits. All right, this is 1d6 plus 3. I'm using it. I'm using Thank it. Thank you. Five. Uh, five. Yes. Oh, where would you like to hit them? Uh, I mean... They're riding away. I mean, right through the shoulder. Like, I don't want to go for a headshot, but like, I know everybody does that. I know. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> but like, but it's oh, so eight thirty nine. Jive's not a like an assassin or like a trained like expert yeah. in the these sort of crafts. So yeah, exactly. I'm just going for what it can hit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, the bolt goes right in there, and you see him. Uh, what was your damage? Uh, that was five. Okay. Um, I mean, he's already been tenderized by Luca, uh, and so you see that Bolt enters, and he's gasping for air a bit as he gets off the horse and tries to kind of like walk, and then realizes he's not getting air and goes down to his knees and then flat as you ostensibly yes. pierce the lung. Let's go. Kelsis whips the reins and speeds off, spurring the yes. I want to immediately look in my bag to see if I have any tinctures. I would have oh. been here because I'm traveling with... Yes, I mean, you came, you were traveling uh, with potions to sell them yeah. or to do business, yeah. How many uh, do I have? <clears throat> um, you have five tinctures. Five tinctures? Mm. Which will come in handy. Yeah, immediately I'm crawling in the back because I'm seeing stuff happening. Yeah. Um, would you like to apply one or offer yes. one to pry? I'm going to pull like two out from my bag and hand them to you. Apply these. We're going to need more of a conversation because you did almost kill me. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be an issue we're going to have. Oh no! Oh! 
You're gonna I, wanna explain yourself. Yep, I'm gonna, we're, we, we're going. Just take these. Do I? Uh, okay. More directions, please. I do Can you magic. see the, uh, I'm Can you see gonna, the wounds? Yeah. Do uh, you see all of this blood? This one's oh, yours. <laughs> this one's another guy. Um, how many <sighs> rolls? What's the tincture? So, for the sake of, I'd say it's fair that you had, out of those five total potions you have, mm-hmm. let's say you have one tincture, two salves, two tonics. Tincture, two salves. Which one would you like to give to Pry? Two tonics. Um, I'm going to give her a tonic. And I'm going to... Um, so that's 2d4 of health plus two. Oh. And I'm going to uh, start applying it. Um, like, just getting my hands... I'm, I'm so sorry. And, like, pulling open uh, the robe a little bit. So sorry. We'll, we'll definitely talk. We're going to talk about consent later. <laughs> <laughs> Luca's just I'm like, very worried right now. Yeah. Luca's, like, looking at you, get uh, bandaged and taken yeah. care of, and he's, like, really angry, and he's just like, just wait until I get my hands on them. It's all right. It's, not, the, the, okay? it's done. Yeah, I'm good. We got all of them, right? And you can make the rolls for yeah. it. Oh, uh, Don't 2d10? 2d4. 2d4. I heard 2d10. Yeah. yeah. That 2D4. seems great. <laughs> That's 2d4 plus 2. 4, 5, 7. 7 nice. total health. Thank you. Um, which is more than she did in damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, I fixed. Uh, well, like as that's happening, uh, you were doing it, and uh, Pry is going to open her book, and she turns to a page that's like a diagrams of uh, Elven anatomy, and she starts reading it out loud, uh, and then uh, her words reverse on themselves, and you actually see the blood begin to like go back into her part of the body as I cast cure wounds on myself, also to get my oh. to get all the way back up, Hell and then yeah. she snaps the book shut. And indeed, you are feeling quite a bit better now. Um, the carriage speeds off, uh, Kelsis spurring the dragonborn bred horses to their limit to make distance between you and the town of High Point behind you. Rain batters what's left of the canvas roof of the carriage, and you're left to tend to your wounds. In perhaps just a little over your heads as you speed toward the mountainous dragonborn enclave of Desna. And that is where our story ends for tonight. Oh, yeah! Tune in next week for the next installment of our exciting new adventure, The Boros Saga Brain... Bra- brains Break? Brains <laughs> Break! Yeah. 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 Horses! Yeah, Until then, <laughs> let's go around the table and remind everyone who we are, who we've been, and where to find us. Oh, sweet. Hi, I'm Sage Ryan. Tonight I have been Curse. Uh, Curse has been your Circle of Wildfire Druid. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I'm around. That's enough for me. <laughs> and I am Kaylee Bray, and I have played Anila Beerbiter, your pirate barbarian. You can find me on Twitter at Hoppa Barbarian. I'm Omar. I've been playing Jive Tafril, uh, your little ship uh, cat boy. And you can find me, <laughs> yeah. at, you can find me at twitter.com slash Omar Najam. I'm Abria Angar. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Quiddy. Uh, and I have been uh, Priviv, your neat. What the <laughs> hell is beeping? I think it's a camera. <laughs> that it was, was a, a microaggression. Tight. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can your yeah, summer. it's all good. Hi, I'm Abri Iyengar. Uh, I've been playing Prithiv, your drow, uh, nearly dead, uh, knowledge cleric, and you can follow me on social media at Quiddy. Hi, uh, I'm Aaron Gray. Uh, I've been playing uh, uh, y- your big bird, um, <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Stone Town, a monk boy. Uh, you can find me on social media. With my name, Aaron Gray. Okay, bye. And I'm Ash. Uh, I've been playing Astrid. You are not so good at rolling oh, Warlock. You and I'm great. Great. You're amazing. I almost murdered you. <laughs> <laughs> you made it possible for Jive to kill someone. That's true, too. Yeah, What's true. a couple of HP amongst friends? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blood in, blood out. We're part <laughs> of a game now. <laughs> uh, and you can find me uh, everywhere as Arcane Faith online. And I am Vince Casso, your DM for today. And you can find me on the Twitters. Instas and on Twitch at Vince Casso. It's my name. That's not the handle, just Vince Casso by itself. (laughs) Okay, have a good night, everybody.